Yeah. All right, I, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Town Council Special Work Session Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. Item first, the FY22 budget amendment to accept funds from the Virginia Risk Sharing Association. BJ? Uh, so basically, it's uh, not a lot here. We're going to be receiving funds, about uh, $30,500 from our insurance company for a police vehicle that was uh, crashed. And requesting council to do a budget amendment to accept the funds. Yeah. Uh, it's fiscal year 22. We'll increase the revenue and then um, increase the expenditure. And then we'll also be coming forward to council to uh, purchase a replacement vehicle here. Will it be enough to purchase a replacement, do we think? Yes, the, uh, we, we just received the uh, quote in. Um, actually, it's, uh, it's about $5,000 short. What our plan is is to keep the vehicle that, we, that was crashed for parts because mm -hmm. parts are so hard to get right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so we're going to come up with those uh, with internal funds that we already have uh, for the additional five thousand dollars. Yes, we do. Yeah. <coughs> I understand sometimes they say when you drive off a lot, it's not worth, you know, not worth what it was. When you got right now, it, I was like, oh man, it's only one year old, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Any questions? Good. Okay. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, the last time we met. Uh, council asked us to come up with a uh, draft Freedom of Information Act. It's in your pamphlet. I, uh, I would like to uh, <coughs> Tina to kind of to give an overview of the FOIA, and you know, obviously we're just following the state code, but uh, we we thought it would be good to formalize it. Tina, uh, we had a FOIA policy on our website. Um, I think it was in 2016, each locality had to put a policy up and name a FOIA officer. So we have had a policy all this time. All I've really done <clears throat> is kind of revise it. I would say 90% of it's state code language. Um, and then there's some things that we have put as a town in there. Probably more of your costs and the procedure on how to ask for a FOIA records request. Um, there is a distinct, distinct, distinction between records and general questions and where those requests go. Am I missing anything? The police department, they have their own exception They have their own, yeah. Um, is that, is that posted anywhere? I, I, when it said that about the police department as a different um, a different, you know, request. Is that? I'll defer to Kevin. We we post it uh, in various locations on our website. So if someone clicks on frontrowva.com, they're looking for a police record regarding an incident, accident, whatever. Um, we do have uh, instructions on how to obtain those particular records. Um, reason being, that goes directly to our records clerk in house. Right. So that email request or, or whatever goes directly to her um, to be able to for fill that for your request. Okay, she's great by the way. Yeah. I've used the service. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just didn't, didn't know if it needed to be part of this too, like all in one spot. Well, I mean, my thought is, and I've seen it in other localities, when you ask for a FOIA request, you'll have a button for um, the town and then you'll have one for the police department records. Mm -hmm. You should be able to, what I'm hoping, um, is be able to click on which button that you need and it should go directly either to the police department or to our FOIA email. We are planning on setting up a FOIA email um, so that we can see everything that's coming in. I and think this, <clears throat> this timing of this is good. I, I can't recall, but how, how many FOIAs have we had since the first? We've had 25 since January 4th. That's just a, in and that's since January 4th, yes. 25. And that's, that's records and questions. That's not just a records request. That's questions and records. There's a difference. I just wanted to talk about a very small change on page three where it says copies are 15 cents per page and a double-sided document counts as two pages. I don't think that should count as two pages. And I know it's a 15 cent difference, but still. You're using ink on both sides. You're using ink on both sides, but I mean, like, it's still one page. To this me, was it's taken page. from other localities, so if it's paper. something the town wants to do differently, we can. I think the ink's more expensive than the paper in that regard. It depends. I mean, I like to see this good. I don't think we should be lessening it. I mean, I've already expressed my concerns with how much time and resources we're spending on FOIA requests. Um, 
I looked up some other localities and I think it's extremely reasonable. I don't understand why we don't just put as much information as we can out onto the web where people can just find it. Like some localities have it where you can just go and find what you need by doing a simple search. You could find the meeting notes, you could find basically anything you wanted, which makes people, it empowers people, right? It takes the staff out of it, it takes printing out of it, right? Because they have to print on their own. That's their problem at that point. So, I mean, I don't know the cost with that, but I think Richmond is working on making that a policy anyways, where everything has to be accessible and just like the courthouse. Well, I think it depends on what they're asking. It seems to me. I don't think all the contracts yeah. are put on the website. So if somebody wants a copy of a contract, they're going to have to ask us. Um, but then they can go ahead and publish it? It's something we could definitely look into, so, yes. Yeah. It, that would require just scanning and yeah. 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 which is not. But I, I do know we put our budget uh, on, mm -hmm. on it. We do put um, news our releases. minutes. Anyone could go to the, the minutes yeah. and the yeah. videos are both there. Yeah, the minutes and the videos news are there for release, sure. Uh, any other you know readily available information that's a, a document that we create documents that are that are more contract oriented it requires other signatures it requires us to scan but we will look into it yeah. it just it could become time consuming for staff and there, and what we want to make sure is that we it's, it's the maintenance of it keeping it up oh, yeah. and so and making sure it's accurate information because mm -hmm. um, you can have a request for permits or notice of violations or right yeah. you know and they would have to put all of that on the website <coughs> great idea but it's a it's very like you said time consuming and we'd have to maintain it to make sure that it was current and up to date another approach is like they do in the feds where there's if there's been several requests for the same information it's at that point that they create a reading room so it's mm. not it's like a hybrid i've approach. actually done that before too it's just the same document over and over yes so i um just a little you know page three in the <laughs> sorry um so in page three, it starts with like, if the estimated cost is more than $200. And so as I was reading it, and I read it a few times, like I read it, and then a couple of days later, I read it just to see. For some reason, I feel like when you skip down almost like three quarters away or halfway, it says, if requested, an estimate of the charges will be provided prior to supplying the records requested. And again, this is more like you guys can read it. Tell me what you think. I almost feel like that needs to be at the beginning of the paragraph because at the top you're talk at the top it's talking about if the estimates this a deposit's going to be required blah 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 but then down at the bottom it says if you request it to me i feel like that should be that should be at the top explaining what to do to request it and then if it's estimated more than two hundred dollars i mean it's really just putting it all together yeah, so I mean, it's the same thing. It's just that, like, that really belongs there, and this belongs here. So the switch it around. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, I mean, you can read it again and see if that, but I think that's how it would make more sense. <clears throat> um, and then a thumb drive, flash drive. I'm just curious. It says, et cetera, a dollar. That's all we, um, just, is anybody, who's buying thumb drives for a dollar? I read that as putting it on the thumb drive. Yeah, that's what I thought. They okay. bring their so own they thumb have to drive. provide their own thumb drive. We have provided them in the past. Okay. Um, if well, that amount needs to be, if we're providing the thumb drive, right? We, we I, may have to. Up okay. The price. I have no idea how much. Yeah, it that is. that's Again, when I looked. At, well, I don't know where Grant is, but that's when I looked at it and I thought, so we're charging came, them a dollar for a thumb drive. <laughs> you're not going to buy a thumb drive for a dollar. It came from another locality. Yeah. Again, that was another. So, yeah, but I mean, if they provide a thumb drive, then I could see there's a, you know. It's, like, it's either way. We've yeah. done it both ways. Well, if we're going to provide it, then I think we should put a charge in there for if we have to provide. For what it actually costs. Yeah, for what it actually costs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so would, would we want to let them use their own thumb drive even? For security yeah. purposes, we that's, end up putting a thumb drive into our system. Probably that, not. That's exactly what I. Yeah, I don't. That's, that's a security where I was risk. coming with. Yeah. Because it could might it might need to be formatted a different way and. Well, not that even stuff. that. You can yeah. technically put viruses on computers. Like our IT yeah. department's been like, you can let somebody in the office by accident by not checking with people and then piggyback off your pass, <coughs> and they can go and stick the thumb drive into your computer and run a virus through the whole system. So, should we just? We should identify. We should just X that out. So we should just say thumb drive. 
I would just cross that out. Market, market cost is it like efficient? Yeah, yeah. That, that way, it's just no, yeah, market it. cost. Yeah. yeah, if it's large enough that it belongs on it, that it has to go on a thumb drive, then that. And then have the cost of thumb drive. Mm -hmm. And the mailing thing, I'm just curious. So we don't charge anything if we have to mail something out unless it's more than two ounces. That's the way. Okay. Just and I get that, and I'm not trying to make things, but like I was thinking about when I heard how many requests we've already had, you know, 25 in a month. I forget, I was calculating last night on my calculator. Like it could be five or $600 for mailing out FOIA things for a year. Five or $600 may not sound like a lot, but that's a lot. I mean, that's, that's money that we could be using in other places. So I don't know. I don't know what How the many people actually ask for it to be mailed? Uh, people right. are asking for it to be mailed. I just I asked Tina about how many people are asking until they just mail. learn that they can be for no cost. Oh, right? Like, they like, <laughs> here's, I don't. I wouldn't want to make. They mail. like email. Uh -huh. that's, so an email fast. That's, the that's good. One. Okay, yeah. it's fast. I just that was the only thing because I thought fifty-five cent stamp. <clears throat> you know, if you Very have to do that every time. That might have been before the days of email, <laughs> but okay, it's still an option. That's an option. Yeah. All right. Looks good. Anybody else? Is uh, 15 cents, is that comparable to what you find for a, per page for other localities? It's what we charge. I think it's... I think 15 it's cents is comparable to other localities. There's language in the Virginia uh, Freedom of Information Act that says what you can charge up to and it limits it. So I think that's the limit. It's 15 cents. <coughs> And you know, talking about copies, like I know, like our copier, you have to, you know, they they charge. We we account for every copy, and front or back counts as two. Because yeah. of the ink. Yeah. You well, know. ink's expensive and had been hard to come by at some points during the pandemic, especially. So is this going on the twenty eighth for approval? With the changes. Okay. Sounds good. Thumbs okay. up. All right, up next, uh, Discover Front Row FY23 budget and joint tourism MOA 501c3. Bethany, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, we're mm -hmm. ready to start. Okay, everybody can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Well, thank you everybody uh, very much for your time uh, this evening. Uh, obviously, here to discuss the uh, budget for fiscal 22-23 related to the tourism initiatives, joint tourism initiatives between the uh, town and the county for which uh, we, as your contractor, JLL, uh, have been working for the last year uh, and put together a updated budget for the next fiscal year. So I believe you each have a packet um, that has a few, uh, just a handful of slides to go through today to walk through uh, this budget update. So if you look to your second page, that should uh, start with the title of uh, joint tourism budget presentation. 
the uh, what we wanted to just review today was uh, the fact that we are working towards a greater mission, obviously jointly, uh, through the original intent that uh, you all had in going out to bid for a tourism contractor. And so we've uh, prepared a <clears throat> mission along with uh, the work that we've done over the last year, uh, and that mission is to promote this price of tourism for both the town and the county, uh, to draw visitors from outside the area, leveraging our marketing and promotion uh, efforts for MGEN over the last year to work towards that goal. We have been working as uh, as JLL, as your contractor, but under the sort of brand of Discover Port Royal, if you will. So the, um, at the direction of the Joint Tourism Committee, uh, that is who we report to, uh, and I've been working collaboratively with them and with representatives from both the town and the county uh, on these efforts for the last year. Again, uh, <clears throat> all of those visitor-facing efforts are managed by JLL uh, under the brand name of Discover Park Royal. Moving to your next page, uh, this can start with budget foundational understanding. Uh, as I just mentioned, the town and the county agreed to jointly and equally fund the tourism initiative. Uh, that initiative has huge value uh, in return on that investment. Uh, according to uh, Virginia Tourism Corporation, the state destination marketing organization, uh, it is a $25 billion annual industry. And it's obviously something we are working to capture uh, our fair share, uh, if you will. And of course, when I say fair share, I mean the town and the county's fair share of getting those tours and really spending dollars captured in our community by our businesses. When we define the visitor, we're talking about those who are traveling into the destination. Uh, the national standard is 15, 15 plus miles that they travel to stay. Um, beyond just those 50 miles, they want to try and drive an increased conversion in overnight stays. Those overnight stays drive a larger portion of that value and of that spread. Uh, last bullet point there, the sub bullet was that the town town have agreed to allocate 100% uh, of those tours in the dollars to this effort. <clears throat> the total BMO funding expectations that were originally set by the RFP that we responded to uh, was, a, again, a total combined spend of $400,000 per fiscal year as a baseline. The initial funding that you all allocated with the county was for a year and a half. That allocation was $600,000, which uh, concludes June 30th of 2022. Uh, on your behalf, we continue to work to improve that uh, funding allocation through pursuing grants and other funds that will become available. Moving to your uh, next stage, uh, budget development over overview. <clears throat> the process, as you all are aware, of developing a budget is a strategic effort. Uh, we work collaboratively with the Joint Tourism Committee, a representative for both the town and the county on putting this together. And that the committee has already seen, obviously, this budget and approved it. Uh, and the county did review and approve, uh, I believe it was last week. Yes, last week. Uh, so here today to go through those steps of what went into this budget development and how we would uh, recommend spending the allocated for the next fiscal year. <clears throat> the, uh, the value of the funds of having this budget uh, just to continue that mission that we reviewed at the top of the, uh, top of the slide. And coming out of COVID, wanting to sort of reignite, restart, and further push that mission uh, to get a greater return on these dollars. The dollars are obviously used for a lot of key aspects of the tourism initiatives, including organizational resources, uh, advertising and marketing spends, events and festivals, other user services and user center programs. So moving to the next slide. <coughs> this one starts with fiscal 23 for the budget. budget. Um, this year is a breakdown of how the funds are supposed to be used. Uh, so just starting with the top bullet. Uh, again, the joint and equal funding commitments that were made originally. I was recommended, obviously, that that 
after your presentation that we were given um, I'm just curious it has like payroll expenses with salaries employee benefits payroll total payroll expenses it says a hundred and eighty thousand five hundred and I'm just wondering how that works um, where that is because if the overall budget is five hundred and eighty two thousand and a hundred and eighty of it is salaries and payroll taxes am I what am I missing I'm sorry if you could help me uh, which what is the title of the it sounds like you have one of the Excel spreadsheets in front of you yeah, um, okay, so called, I have one for, it's called you know, a copy of DFR updated FY23 budget it's the one that shows your FY your proposed FY budget 23 and then 2021 versus 22. <laughs> it's the one you sent us uh, prior to the uh, our joint tourism committee meeting, okay. where the gross revenue is Okay, so uh, as I said, about 500 thousand dollars in the question under operating expenses, where it says payroll <laughs> expenses, um, it says salaries, and then it lists the different, I'm guessing, positions and then <coughs> payroll taxes and stuff. I'm just curious. So the payroll is 180000 right? That's how I take it. Yes. Out of a $582,000 budget, 
right? Yeah. Which, and I, I think, I mean, that's like 31%. Of the budget is that am I? Like, yeah, it's like a third of it, and then you have administrative expenses as well. That's ninety-two thousand. So more than a third is being spent between payroll and administrative costs. So I think Lori wants to know, um, I guess why is that what it is? Like why well, we're I'm just trying that? to or? well that, and then so the visitor center personnel <laughs> looks like it's a different line item. If you scroll down where it says PT labor, is that is that Four times. correct? Four times. Yeah. Right, oh, uh, okay. okay, so now that I know that you all are looking at the self-directed happy to get to that with you, uh, sorry, I was looking at through things. Um, so yeah, so just to step through that document, and if there's question is, why is there 30% uh, of the budget tied to payroll, uh, and I think the second part of your question was, will the visitor center part-time labor show up in visitor center or in personnel? Let me answer the second question first. Uh, currently, the visitor center staff are um, part-time, temporary town employees. So that line item today is how I track it today. With the finances, is that it does show up inside of the visitor center um, section of the budget, if you will. So I have left that as is for fiscal 23. Um, in the event that we do transition into a, uh, a non-profit DMO organization, a standalone organization, we would recognize that it's spent as personnel and it would be identified <coughs> as a center personnel. But um, so then back to the first part of your question, which I think was, you know, we've got, you know, roughly 30% of the <coughs> year of expenditures uh, associated with payroll. Um, the anticipated expense for, uh, for payroll for these positions is to, let's just look at the positions themselves. Um, technically, the managing director of the uh, and that was included in our original proposal. The tourism director is a position that we originally proposed and was part of our original proposal as someone who would be uh, boots on the ground day to day uh, running the, the show on site, if you will. That position uh, was not hired last year. Uh, we did go out and uh, search and, and get close to one or two folks, uh, but could not get that to convert and are using that later of those questions. So we are anticipating that being uh, on board in fiscal 23, and that would be a huge value add to the operation. We currently have a marketing manager, uh, which is on by contract, uh, and this is the anticipated amount of time that we would need uh, out of that person. And then the destination services manager is uh, currently, again, a, a part-time temporary town employee. So a portion of, of what you, of, of that person's position shows up here at 20000 and the other uh, portion of that person's position is showing up associated with the visitor center labor. I think that uh, part-time labor. The destination <laughs> service manager, the, you mean Deb? Correct. That's more than 20000 yeah, she said that's, that's correct. Yeah. What I'm saying She's is that the, <coughs> we, we the other part uh, split her, if you will, we split her position where it shows up 50% as personnel, in personnel, and 50% shows up under uh, part time, because center of labor. Right, so right. we did not uh, put 100% <coughs> of that position into the salary position role, just because we anticipate her being 100% salary employee at the moment. She currently sits in uh, the, basically inside of the town as a part-time temporary employee. So in essence, is it safe to say about $275,000 is overhead? Um, when or you three. say overhead, I just want to clarify what that actually means. Uh, seems like non, uh, seems things that are operational expenses that are uh, vital to the success of the operation. So some of it might be considered overhead, things like accounting services, one-time costs related to getting the organization started. Um, those types of things would be overhead. As far as the, the positions you see here, um, it, we're currently doing what you see like up there with, you know, basically two people. Um, mm -hmm. The addition of the positions that we anticipate 
that were originally proposed in our proposal, we would be able to execute on all of the aspects for both the town and the county of what we're here to deal with towards initiative. And I think um, also that those positions listed under operating are producing um, positions, like your marketing manager and things like that. They're creating content. They're doing things that are part of tourism. And by the way, I can't speak to the tourism director salary, but the marketing manager salary, that's impressive. As in, like, that's really cheap. <laughs> that's super cheap. That's, that's lower because it's a contract, right? And so we only pay for the work that we do. We don't have a hired person who runs that all the time. She's hourly. I think our hourly rate is $40 an hour. That's correct. That's right. still really good. And as we do more or less with contract. Right. Does that help answer the question? Uh, I don't know if we're on to the next question. Whatever y'all. So under marketing, <coughs> this is uh, Councilman Mullet. Sorry, uh, under marketing, we have um, well, under the subcategory of advertising, we have BRO, NVM, and VTC. What do they stand for? Sure, um, it's a great question. I apologize, I didn't realize you all would have this worksheet in front of you. I will fill that out more clearly. Um, so those are uh, applications. That we have already spoken single uh, and we have received uh, media kits as where we would see value in placing media and placing advertising. So, PRO stands for Blue Ridge Outdoors, uh, NVM is Northern Virginia Magazine, VTC is the state of Virginia's uh, destination marketing organization called Virginia Tourism Corporation. Um, they put out things like the annual visitor guides and things like that. So, that is those three publications, they are um, you know, VTC and the organization, uh, as well as they put out publications. But those three are where we have identified today would be valuable to place advertising <coughs> in those publications. Recreation News is another one, and Virginia Living is the last one. Bethany, I wasn't clear. The positions that are not filled that you anticipate filling, when do you think that would occur? The positions that are not filled that we would like to fill? Um, uh, would love to have been filled already. Uh, the tourism director that you see here in line 26 is uh, that salary is for a full year. So we would love to have that person on board as early as the fiscal year, uh, as early in the fiscal year as we could. No, that's um, the um, marketing manager, as we've all stated, is uh, a contract position, so that is for a full year as well. And again, with the designation services manager, who currently is employed and has been working, we just have it split 50% uh, in personnel and 50% in uh, you know visitor center. So right now, the only position that is not filled is that tour the director role. And if I'm not mistaken, we um, couldn't move forward on that because we didn't have the other pieces in place, like the the nonprofit and all of those things. Because I remember you were interviewing like last year, I think it was, before we found out like, well, who do we tell this person who they work for? How do they get paid? How does this work? So, yeah. Thank you. That's right. We, um, so we did uh, go out to we posted this position um, on two different occasions. We had, uh, I think we had upwards of six or eight candidates at one point um, that we screened down that were worthy of uh, real interviews. I facilitated a, a, a series of two or three rounds of interviews with most of those folks. Uh, we got down to really to two people, uh, and both times in both searches, and they would have been finalists, uh, if you will, in their own right, uh, and could not take that conversation any further. Both of those folks, um, quite frankly, lost interest and, and weren't comfortable because the question was, do they come on as a contractor waiting to see if we were going to actually get approval to move into the DMO and at this point both of them have moved on to uh, new opportunities. So yep. I would like to restart that search uh, knowing that we are moving forward, we have the opportunity to successfully recruit uh, valuable candidates. 
Thank you. Um, Bethany Amber Morris, I have a question regarding marketing and under events. Um, I see a lot of local events, which I would love to support and help. However, what is outdoor race? Sure. Yeah. Great question. So, what we've discussed strategically as, as the joint forward committee uh, is the effort behind wanting to sponsor, support, elevate, raise awareness, and ultimately drive attendance to events that are tourism facing and how those events play a role in the overall tourism strategy. Uh, so we have identified a handful, as you see here, of uh, events that actually do exist today that are uh, standalone events that have organizers behind them. Uh, we have also allocated funds uh, in its proposed budget to go out and find the right partner and this example of an outdoor race we have a couple that we have uh, identified but haven't talked to yet or have been recommended to us as an event that would be worthy or an organizer that would be worthy of partnering with uh, but we have not solidified or gone any further in that since what we knew that this budget would be uh, you know actionable going into fiscal 23. So these, that is a if you will, a placeholder, but the intent behind that is to partner with an organizer that would be able to produce an event. We would sponsor that event, we would put marketing dollars behind it, we would put all kinds of resources to bring that event to fruition. Um, so if that event organizer has not yet been identified, or at least maybe it's been identified, uh, but we have not sort of publicly gone anywhere with that. We have not contacted anybody for that event quite yet. So it sounds like one of those mudding events, like yeah. those great mudders well, or something? So do I understand this correct? You're going to placehold <laughs> that amount for one event? Yeah. To contribute so towards? It's just my concern. The line item itself is a placeholder. Correct. To work with an organizer uh, that would bring Singular. an outdoor group who are calling it outdoor race. But let's just use an example of like a trail run or a marathon or some kind of mountain biking event. Yeah. You I know, understand that. My concern was just that it's double and more than double some very large successful local events and that could seem as if it's a slap in the face to them if it's for a singular event. I mean $10,000 for multiple runs sounds feasible but there's like um, Spartans and stuff like that that um, I've done one Spartan and everybody it was during the summer and so everybody went to like <clears throat> I think it was near Mass Mountain so people were going to the lodges and mm -hmm. staying there and so yeah I've done I've traveled event. to do them as yeah. well but I just to do a new event for triple what some of the like Appaloosa is a huge successful event so to see some of the ones that are already successful and triple that going to a brand new startup event just seems like it could be offensive to our local. I think people. she's also including having somebody yeah, so to organize it, it. Yeah. Yeah. Sal, like a small stipend um, involved in that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think what you're discussing is is great, and it's huge. Obviously, it's huge. Um, but I think this year for the first time we did sponsor Appaloosa to the tune of twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, and as an example, we were able to uh, list that event uh, through partnering with hotels. It was the first time that they had a hotel partnership, uh, and we were able to help them basically sell in convert rooms that otherwise would not have been sold as part of their ticket package. Uh, we were also able to um, put part of those dollars, including supporting marketing messaging and other advertising to drive uh, attendance to that event. And so, what you see in this line item is based on what we learned from that quick uh, spot with Appaloosa is that there's value in adding to that resource and doing more with them. Um, and that is an established event that has a great track record. So we're one thing in this budget to, again, add to that something like an outdoor race, as an example, where we may or may not have the existing infrastructure, let's just say, that it's not necessarily an Appaloosa that already has everything that they sort of want and need to pull the event off. We've allocated what you see there is additional funds to find the right partner that could bring the event. Um, if that, it's not to say that if we didn't find the right partner, those dollars wouldn't be reallocated. But we're anticipating that that type of an event, something that requires real timing, 
um, that sort of the professional wage standards of having timing and having, you know, whether it's street closures or being able to sponsor something of that nature may require more from a startup standpoint, and so that's why that allocation is the way that at least recommended. Uh, Bethany, this is um, Councilman Gillespie. Um, back under the, the races again, was one of those... Um, I'm sorry, Council Member Gillespie, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but you, you're the hardest one to hear. You can speak up yeah. a little bit. Um, was, was one of those under the, the outdoor races, was, was that the, the, the bicyclists? Uh, it could be. So, yeah. we, again, like I said, we have... We haven't identified which event or which race or which organizer, but something like a cycling race or a cyclocross race is, is on the table. Um, again, we're talking about something with the caliber that would be competitive, would be timed, would have that sort of required infrastructure. So cycling is, on, is, is one of those options. One. This is uh, Councilman Lloyd. One question I had is just um, what are the metrics, are the metrics from last year available in terms of what we got for what we spent? Yes, absolutely. Um, we, we do produce a uh, monthly report uh, that typically is shared with the Joint Tourism Committee. One of the things, and I, I will 100% uh, would be absolutely available to share those and more uh, with you all. Um, one of the things we've anticipated wanting to do is when this does move into a DMO, those reports will be published on the website, be very transparent. But yeah, uh, simple answer is we do have metrics uh, from last year. Um, as an example, uh, on our social platform, the, uh, the cost per click as an individual metric is about 35 cents. Uh, so when we are pushing things through our own digital channels, our own social channels, we're able to spend you know, conservatively not really all that much money compared to large media buys uh, and are seeing great return. Uh, that's one example. I'm happy to go into more of these with, with you all uh, in as, as much detail as you want, but we do have all of them. Okay, if I could ask a follow-up. <coughs> How do clicks translate into visits? What, how, how are we bridging that gap? Excellent, excellent question. It is one of the hardest things um, to track, right, that the objective is to generate uh, overnight stays out of the work that is done. Um, that is why we are so uh, committed and interested in partnering with lodging partners, hotel partners, like we did with Appaloosa, where we're able to create a unique package and a unique link for an offer code and are able to see those rooms basically convert from the work that and from the, the advertising and the promotional work that we do. Not every one of those uh, efforts has something that clean and easy. Uh, but typically what we do is why we have placed a ton of media with uh, individual publications. You see more of that in this year as we give our fellow in that water a little bit. But for the most part, this year, we have spent the bulk of our dollars on our own social channels and our own digital platforms. So when I say um, own, that would be the, the platforms that are discovered by oil. So we've spent most of our funds in Facebook, Instagram, um, Google Advertising. When we run Google Ads, we can see action taken from those clicks. We can see how many times somebody has looked for directions based on a Google ad. <coughs> we can see how many times somebody has called the visitor center, for example, uh, from those Google ads. So what we instill in every piece of direct marketing that we put out is a link back to that Google ad or that link back to uh, a landing page on the site that allows us to track. So while the cost per click doesn't say that every single person came to visit, we are able to see actions taken from things like Google Ads, from things like inquiries where we're getting people that are requesting specific packages based on things we're putting out. So we are working very closely with our partners to try and track and bring back you know, more metrics, more KPIs for you all to say, you know, this is something that we understand, this is something that we can see value in. You know, and that's why we're placing this type of media, and this is why we're getting that kind of return. So, 
It is the most difficult thing to track in tourism as a sort of general uh, position when it comes to tracking overnight conversion. There are technology tools out there. Uh, they can be very costly, uh, but we've built into some of them. And what we're trying to do with this budget is expand on what we've learned in, in this past year where we know what certain messages are working and what platforms give us that return. Uh, and through things like event partnerships, we'll be able to hone in on that further. Thank you. I have a general question. Going back to the budget foundational understanding slide, it was my understanding from our last joint meeting, uh, you'll see bullet point number four, town and county to allocate 100% of tourism dollars to this effort. Um, I, I didn't, I was not under the understanding that the town had agreed to 100% of our tourism dollars to this effort as infrastructure pertains to tourism. And there are other ways that we can allocate a portion of those funds. I think that is part of the MOA, right? That we'll be talking about, yeah. That we'll be talking yeah. about. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so it, it's in the current MOA and the proposed MOA. Uh, it was also part of the RFP that we originally responded to of how the funds would be uh, appropriated, if you will, for the tourism effort. So, the, again, the intent, at least that, as we understood it coming into the role, was that there was... Um, a minimum requirement, if you will, based on state legislation uh, that the county has to follow uh, and that there, there could be additional above and beyond that and that whatever was mutually agreed to between the town and the county would be equally funded and supported and that it would be 100% of the tourism related spending so that there wouldn't be you know, dueling towards an effort to do that. We obviously want to work collaboratively and make sure that we're, you know, high tide rates and all those types of situations. Um, so that's, that was the intent behind it. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Before you go, just to clarify, uh, how much uh, are we considering carrying over from FY22? Uh, right now, we have, uh, as granted, we're still in the fiscal year, but the way I've budgeted the current fiscal year, uh, it would allow us to roll forward about $90,000 worth of funds into the next fiscal year. Again, we'll see intent if that strategically allows us to do more coming out of COVID and to generate more, excuse me, going into uh, fiscal 23 and into the following calendar year. So that would be in addition to what we're funding, or they would be taken off. What? Correct. We would, we would, the, the MOA is we would propose, mm -hmm. that we would give $200,000 and the county would give $200,000. And then in addition, they're carrying over $90,000 with anticipation you're going to be able to spend $400,000 between now and June, correct? Can you say that last part one more time? You're anticipating to spend the remaining dollars between now and June, right? Or you have them planned? Correct. All right, Bethany. All right. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, up next, uh, fiscal year. Well, we've got to discuss the MLA. Uh, we had a joint tourism committee meeting. And if I could recap, <clears throat> as part of that meeting, they revised the MLA. If you can remember, originally, of January of last year, the MOA was for us to create a, a board. And then when they went down this path, they realized that we can't create a board authority. Uh, the, the, what we can create is what they believe, or at least the county's assistant attorney said that we can create a 501c6. Uh, and so as a result, we, uh, we revised the MOA to reflect that um, and when we had our joint meeting with the county and the council uh, there there appeared to be consensus that would be the direction we would like to go and then part of the MOA uh, they revised it um, the most current one is the ones that are highlighted in yellow and um, we'd be willing to discuss it 
uh, council did authorize the mayor to go ahead and sign the MOA, but since the, there was a lot of changes to it, um, it was, and also because the MOA is going um, to the county uh, board of supervisors, uh, we felt it would be prudent that you all have the opportunity to review it and <coughs> um, and get concurrence. It will require. It, it's up to the obviously up to you all. We don't have to do a motion because you already authorized the mayor to sign it. But if if you all feel that there's some other step you would like to do, it's it's your prerogative. Um, after we go through the MOA, though, uh, BJ will also. Um, present just the tourism budget first just so you all will see where we are and how those dollars uh, will be continue to be supplemented by general funds uh, to meet the MOA agreements at this time so you all have had it I don't know if you've had time to read it and if you have any questions staff is here to be willing to answer one of my questions was exactly what you just said in terms of so we're saying to be funded at a minimum by the transient op occupancy tax um, and matched equal by the town. What, what, is, what do we normally, what, is, what do we get in terms for the, for the lodging <coughs> yes. Lodging tax revenue is budgeted next year for uh, 300, mm, 317,000 dollars, almost 318,000 for next year. Um, the, highest uh, that we've ever had for lodging tax was in 2014 uh, was 336,000. What's our current in tax in tax in town tax rate for lodging? 6%. That's it. <laughs> so 318,000 and the and the MOA it doesn't really say in the MOA exactly what the dollars are it just says that we're going to match the county. Right. So and and may I, I, the only thing I'm, and I know I'm not a lawyer, so I'm kind of glad Jim is here for that. When you just say, like, match, I'm just saying, we, we are putting a cap that, like, just saying the county couldn't come out and say, we're going to put in 400. You all said that you were going to match it, and we don't have 400 or what, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just, I'm just asking, where, where do we? Yeah, I was under the understanding in our joint meeting, we, we had agreed upon the language, we will match up to 200,000. That was my understanding, yeah, and, that, and it was I, going to be specified. I had a discussion with, um, with, with um, Supervisor Oates about that as I was reading through this. Uh, and that, was, that was the, the looks good, um, but the only comment that I had had was, was should we put that capital at two hundred? Um, I would also, you know, if it would, if it would, you know, and I also spoke to her about. You know, both parties can con contribute more okay. if 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 the budget um, you know allows it. But um, <clears throat> other than that, that's the only comments I have on this. Um, I told them. I mean, as part of the joint tourism committee, uh, BJ and I were both part of it. Uh, I just listened and I said, you know. I will share this with council. I, I, we didn't really make any uh, comments. We didn't really say we agreed with it. The only area that I'm trying to find now where I said that um, subject to funding, um, even if we were to do the cap, because we can't commit future council for funding uh, MOAs. And so at any given time, that could fluctuate. Uh, so that there. language might be better yeah, to say now, depending on what Now I'm trying to figure out, DJ, where did I add that? I'm sorry? The part that I added that subject to funding. Was um, the, you requested it to be added, but I don't, um, I don't believe it was added. Was that removed? Um, I don't remember seeing the one, the version where it was at. I know you think you have requested. Okay. And I know at the meeting we had all of us together, we had talked about the county is required by code. They're they required to <coughs> all use all of, of their all dollars, of their but the town is not. 
Yeah, the county is not stuff. required to use all of their dollars from tourism or from lodging toward tourism. It's a percentage. Okay. Um, they are not required to by state code. It's um, and I can't remember the exact language, but it's it it ends up being roughly sixty or seventy percent of the of the lodging dollars. Okay. Um, but they certainly can use the one hundred percent toward tourism if that's how they so choose. Okay. Um, another thing, the very it's actually at the top of the second page. It says Discover Front Royal shall become the sole tourism authority for the parties and tourism expenditures outside the obligation shall have Discover Front Royal consent. But I guess my question is, is if we came up with something on our own, you know, like I'm thinking like the light show that, you know, Councilman Moore, <coughs> we're just little things like that. I was just thinking, does this mean that anything that we might come up with on our own, not to say that we're going to, you know, be doing it all the time, but does that mean we can't do anything that could fall under the auspices of tourism without actually getting their permission? So what does that yeah. mean then? Shall have Discover Front Row consent. What does that mean? It says any, I mean, that's how I interpret it, but maybe not. Does it, do you interpret it differently? What page are you on? The very top of the second page, at the top, it's in yellow, Discover Front Royal shall become the sole tourism authority for the parties and tourism expenditures outside the obligations shall have Discover Front Royal consent. What does that mean? It that way. Well, how does, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, outside well, obligations, if we're having an event, that's not an obligation, right? That's not the, any their obligation. That's our stuff. So that's that's what my where I'm at with the wording. But I mean, y'all could call whoever and ask them specifically. Yeah, or we can word it to make sure it's clear that we can still have our own community. Yeah, because I'm not even really sure why that line's necessary. Well, I guess is what I'm thinking. Why would we? Why would we vote to give some? Other entity, yeah, some other entity, sole <laughs> authority from anything. Our that's money. why we're getting. That's, that's why, why we hired. Our jobs to, that's to, why, to, that's to, why we hired them. We hired them to be the to tourism. Exercise. We hired them to be the tourism people, yeah. but we didn't hire them to dictate exactly what we want to do. And I think saying that they have to have consent over it garnishes all of the town's freedom on how we're going to handle. I don't think it takes away from our community events and those things that we want to host. Now, like I said, we could go over and have whoever added this yellow line, was it Alisa or Alyssa, contact her and ask her what she exactly meant by it. But we definitely hired them to be the tourism people. We also have the ability to fire them if we want to fire them. If you want to go and hire other people at hundreds of thousands of dollars, that's an option too. But we specifically hired them to do this, and then we tied their hands. That's why we couldn't get a director, because their hands were tied. We couldn't do that. Um, so it's been in a standstill, we're investing dollars. Orange. Well, yeah, I agree with all of what yeah. like you're, you're talking about the JLL contract. This is a memorandum of agreement between the us and the county. And right. We're saying that that an entity that does not exist, we've not seen any bylaws, we don't know who's going to be on it, is going to be the sole tourism authority for the parties. That the parties are the town and the county. And we're creating mm -hmm. a third tourism authority. And by the way, we're giving them the de the DMO. They, we don't even know what the bylaws are yet. So we're going to have representation on this, and we're going to have some input on all of this. One seat of representation can't be across the board. We, we either commit to have an organization that runs our tourism, or we don't. They should run our right. tourism with our, with our feedback. But does that mean they have to run every single event? No, no, and I'm on record saying that I don't want them I mean, to have to come to us for every single thing. But I also us. don't want us to be able to host something and then say, oh, we're not giving you permission for that. No, they're, they're not going to ask about permission. This is a, that's about funding and other stuff. But no, consent for any other tourism authority outside the obligations would prohibit us from doing just that, by my interpretation. Well, so can we have a legal who interpretation of that is, sentence? The goal is literally to prevent who us. Who added the yellow line? Does anybody know? It must have been Alyssa. We All right, had so the, the only we person that can give us a definition of this yellow line and who could correct this and expound on it would be Alyssa. I disagree. We have a lawyer sitting here. So what's the legal interpretation of that sentence? I think the legal interpretation is that the plain 
Discover Front Row shall become the sole tourism authority for the parties. And tourism, tourism expenditures outside the obligations, and I take that to mean the obligations of this MOA, shall have, shall have Discover Front Row consent. So, in other words, if you don't, if you want to do something, I think a fair reading is you have to go to Discover Front Row. To and that's how I interpret it. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm so, right. So what they're trying to prevent is in other localities when they don't have clear lines that say we're doing this thing, our contract ends at a certain point or whatever it is, that towns often get cold feet. This happens with companies that hire marketing companies. They start to do the opposite of what's right for their business because they've been doing it wrong for so long. Mm -hmm. And they start telling their marketing person exactly what to do or whatever it is. And they're actually hurting their business. We have to look at this in a business sense that what we're attempting to do is monetize tourism in Front Royal more than we're already doing it and we're hiring professionals to do that and I understand Scott's concern that we're handing this over to this unformed but hopefully we'll have some kind of input into that but what they're they, this is truly what they're trying to do they're trying to prevent us from meddling and doing things that are contrary to best practices when we were elected to spend these funds we, yeah, Joe that's, this that's, is a this is a chart saying we're giving you permission to spend this money for this but if we want to, by the people who elected us, have an additional event, why do we need their permission? We're not meddling. Do your thing. You have our full permission. They're we're giving you, you say, we're hey, giving you five hundred thousand dollars. Let event. us do they're what else additional say, we want to do. They're probably going to go, oh, that's a great event, or they're going to say that's a terrible event, and these are the reasons why. Or they're going to say, but, well, actually, we have something else planned at that time they're not aware of, and so we prefer that if you maybe move it to a different date. I think that it's the goal. The goal and the intention is maybe something we need to find out exactly what that is and maybe get that spelled out. I think but. perhaps a public hearing would have been good in that regard then because if we were elected officials elected to spend tax dollars and allocate revenue and then we want to do something with that as the elected officials and then this third party tells us mm, no we don't like that idea. Of which you're sitting on. One member of this council will be sitting One on. member. Is that enough. not representative? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. that elected you might not have elected I, me. I we personally have different... did not get elected did, to run did, tourism in yeah. Front Royal. I didn't get elected so, to host the, events. The, the, yeah. Yeah. The last time you I got elected to support the community. And I'm supporting the community yeah. by giving this to somebody who knows what they're doing. Yes. And I've agreed That's, with that. I'm not a marketing or tourist. Or you can't specialist be either. Look, you that okay. if we want to go back so, to the original so, of how we got here, we can do that, but so we're we, stuck here. Do we, we're here. Do we not want this in here? Do we not we're, want this in here? We're stuck with not having a, tour, a tourism because director on staff. Yes, we are stuck with that one. Hire a tourism director. Okay, so, that's easy. So look, guys. Fire on the videos. I mean, I don't, I don't like this either, to be honest with you. I mean. I think we should be I, able to do additional things. I think so also. Um, so can we get a consensus on what to do about this? You can take that line item out for all I care. Or, well, let me... I want it to, I'll, I'd like for it to say it will not stop the town from doing additional, doing additional events. Community yeah, I mean, service. you could find some friendly language that said, you know, that we'll try We're to committed, work together. We're committed, we'll let you do what you're yeah. going to do, well, but we, we all try, we'll to try to work together. But I think to say you have to have, mm. to me, consent means permission. And well, to, I think, I think we'll... We will work with them. I mean, yeah, we're not going to take it and go to them and say we're going to do this no matter yeah. what. I mean, if they have an I mean, advanced schedule for ideas. that time. But I, I don't like the idea that, you know, they could say no. You know, I, I agree with everything Amber said. I mean, it's... Yeah. If we want to have a Christmas event at the gazebo and put up some lights and sell hot cocoa with the booth or something, and they tell us, no, that's not in hand in hand with what we think is successful for marketing, whether it's successful for marketing or not, if the town wants to host something, the town should be allowed to host so something. We're, we're, we're in two different areas again. The small T, big T. Big T tourism is their focus. They're not focused on downtown. Yes. But this so restricts us event. from small T if we have to I, get their permission. I don't know if it does for small and T I, stuff. Is that I, I, think, I, think, I think what the intention here was, and, and I'm not going to go out on the limb, and I, I do want an answer for this, um, but I think, in, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, but I think their intention was is they do not want the county or the town meddling in the budget process of, of, of this. The money of, we're giving of, them. Of the 500, you know, what we have have already allocated mm -hmm. for them. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I, I don't think 
their intention was that um, you know we can't have separate events, but I would like clarification. On I agree. If that, that is the intention, can we call Alyssa or Bethany? A yeah. key yeah. Oh wait, I was going to say a, Bethany is J O L. Yes. Good. I mean, if this is an agreement it's, it's between us clear and the county. Yes, say but it's well, the lawyer input. just interpreted yeah, it, and I mean, from a legal interpretation, he got the same thing, and that's how court works. It's interpretation. Exactly. So another lawyer can tell you something different. Yes. That's what they do. I, so we need my, my concern with this agreement is in under uh, paragraph three obligations number one. You don't create a 501c3 organization. You create an organization such as a corporation which then applies to the federal government to get 501c3 uh, tax exempt status. And there is no specificity in here about who is creating that other than an entity that may not be able to create it because it's not an entity. Right. That's uh, second, that um, who's, uh, who's president, who's vice president, who, who selects those officers and who's on the board. I think when you read back in here, the town and the county get two non-voting members. Yeah, that was my other question. Um, non so, so they're non-voting members of an organization that somebody's going to set up I guess the committee is going to set it up or try to set it up and form a corporation. And it, it, I, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I just think it needs to be specified. It's a lot of bureaucracy. This is you don't get a vote. Okay. I mean, that's good so you don't get a vote on that. You don't get a vote. Okay, that's good. You don't get a vote. I know you don't get a vote, but you, if you bring your A game, you can have influence and explain your positions and what the town's positions are, and represent you're a representative of this elected body. So I well, I think no, I no, think with your concern, I, mean, I think with Jim's right. concerns, that was what Scott was trying to express: create a five hundred one six C organization by committee or a group that's not even identified, and then there's also no bylaws yet. We, we don't even know so we're giving the money and the permission, well, and we don't even understand don't what the even bylaws are. We know who are. among us is going to be on it. I mean, this is this is this is I'm not structured. I'm it's not against tourism. I'm not against marketing. I'm not against doing something joint. I'm against muddying the waters and wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars with inconsistency and. Confusion. I'm confused by how we're setting this up is going to waste all those monies. Like, how does that happen? Once it's set up, we don't know. We don't know any of the bylaws. We don't know who's going to be on the board. Because so we can't move forward budget. because we don't have anything. So Correct. we just keep but coming to we understand contract. it? We just keep just coming to this deal. I know, because this is, because I, I'm, I, at least from my perspective, I'm arguing strenuously. This is a bad approach. We can just put what we want into a contract that we can change later. But if we create a separate board that has its own life with people who are not elected and the people of the town cannot fire, then we're, we're taking the power, power of the purse, power of direct, directing how the, how the town looks to the outside world out of the hands of the people and giving it to some, some board. I mean, that's what's, I mean, read your read to surf, road to surf them. I mean, it's, it's, it's in there, guys. But the point is, like, if we leave it, if we leave it within the town as a function of the town, at least there's accountability. We hire a tourism director who isn't doing a job, nobody does anything. The townspeople can vote out the, the, the towns, the, um, the council. I, and hiring then, a tourism director. Just the just recycling, the town manager. Are we just recycling again and again like this? We'll I mean, just this, not do anything. I mean, I hate to Don't say it, that. but the ship's kind of sailed on this a little bit, so we need to either find some compromise on this or just kill the whole thing. Cause, kill it. Um, kill it. Kill it. If you can't recycle well, it until, until you have understanding. Get to some point of consensus and then take a vote on it and see if we can just move it forward or or kill it. I, don't, I can't it. vote on something that I can't understand. You can't vote out your your tourism director either. <clears> the tourism director reports into, would report into Steven. Steven's not elected. Either. But, but we still, hold Stephen accountable for his management. Trying to get to this thing. Yeah, we were, I, I, we were, so we were waiting a year for this, this to come to Sir here. Scott, at, at, the, at the meeting. So, so that's, that's helped me understand. No, that. I disagree. I was all for doing something combined with a mutual understanding. First of all, I didn't want to do anything at all. I don't know that it's necessarily the town of Front Royal's place to be doing this. Well, um, you just said it's the place to do events. I'm no, sorry. Yeah, the town to do events. I don't know that it's the town's no, place no, to be hiring a 
firm and handing it over to a committee, that's adding like three levels of bureaucracy to tax revenues that we're just handing off to a board that we have no say over. And we can't fire them. However, we can cut the head off of them if, by not funding them. It, after we've already initially funded them, I am for moving forward with a clear, concise understanding, and this MOA still does not provide that to me. But to that, so if I were placed with that option tonight to kill it or not hash it out, I would kill it. I can't, but, in good conscience, so say yes wanna, to something I don't so understand. Don't hash it out or, I do. Or, yeah. I do. And that's what I'm, that's, that's what we're that's what our intent yeah. here yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like we keep cycling back to let's kill it versus right. actually hashing it out. What's that, John? To get you could some attach some a copy of the proposed bylaws. Yes, I would be way more comfortable if we had proposed bylaws to review. But don't we have to have that committee formed where they're going to be the ones to create the bylaws? I mean, isn't that how that works? They, they already, they've already started, started the formation of the it. committee. Yeah. yeah, so why can't the people that have already filed and started the formation of the committee do that? And Jim, just to answer just one of the things that you said you asked. So I thought I read this, and I think the thought what was going to happen is the Joint Tourism Committee is the one that once this 501c is created that right. they would dissolve yep. and they would just take over. So I think it was like that kind of a step process, right. just but to answer it, that. It doesn't really say that. It says once the committee is, is created, they will dissolve, but it doesn't say they're going to be the, the 501c3 yeah. organization. Right. right. I, yeah. I don't know who's going to be the 501c3 organization, which is my concern. And, and both the county and the town only have two non-voting members. Uh, I think if, 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 if there were a copy of bylaws attached to this, and this would change to be, you create an organization pursuant to the you know, draft bylaws attached here too, and to apply for 501c3 status, you would have a better concept of what this entity is going to be. But back to Gary's point, um, I think that the amount that we're spending is a bit extravagant for where we are uh, in in our town's um, I don't know, tasks of things before us. We have a ton of in infrastructure that we, we need to address, and we're like in the middle of it. And I think that we, we all came to the realization that so many of these things have been neglected for a very long time. I think that the town is heading in an excellent direction, but I think that the cart is a little bit before the horse, whereas you know, we have lots of stuff um, that people are traveling through town in order to uh, in order to visit um, Skyline Drive, if you want to take one big example, but within, without, within town limits, it's like there are, there are only a few entities that the concept of tourism speaks to, and we're dumping a ton of money to, to essentially, you know, support and advertise for them, which, you know, it, I, I support that, but like... Doesn't, does, doesn't tourism help in that effort is, is the, mm -hmm. as far as tax revenue? What's that? Just, you know, meal tax. Meals tax. Well, I would, I, tax well that's another the, point. The, I would just, I would just cut the meals the tax. So well, in 2017 we had a lower, lower tax. They raised from 2% to 6% now. And to I echo that sentiment, why do you want to cut the meal tax? At the police because I don't like taxes. department budget. Well, I mean, you don't like taxes, but that's kind of how this runs. And it's a meals tax. But are we being good stewards of the revenue that we have coming in is my question. We just heard the police's budget and their request and considered raising taxes and said, bring it back to us, staff. But then... So While we're not taking care of our officers, we're willing to just throw out those? over so, a third. So can, I understand that, but our these are tourism dollars. I understand that. But what I'm telling so, you is, when you're spending no a third Sorry. or more, it does make sense. I'm telling you, when you look at the way that you're allocating the funds, are you doing it responsibly, or could it be done better? Also, unlike the county, we're not required to reinvest all of ours. And as Scott brought up infrastructure, I've preached it since I was elected. We have students walking in the middle of the road every day after school because there are no sidewalks. Guess what? Having accessibility and walkability increases tourism. Because do I want to get out of my car and park and walk a town with no sidewalks? No. So tourism is affected by infrastructure. We have infrastructure we're neglecting and not funding and have for decades. So what I'm saying is, are we being a good steward of our infrastructure funds, which also tie in 
to Taurus funds. All right, I'm so, going to be honest so about that. Does that prevent us from having any additional discussions about procedure and processes moving forward? Yeah, we can't you, sign it with the this. the beginning of this conversation yeah. with the county and starting this <laughs> agreement process forward. I'm just curious. We I can't so sign it without removing this. So can, can You're we not going to get employees in-house so for less than 180000 So can we take all of our concerns here tonight and, and, and send it back to them and say, look, this is what we need changed. Because I do not want to kill this, guys. I mean, this is important. And, and you know, whether you agree with it or not, it, it's important. Because we so did try. I'm being honest, other you can't bring on those, those people with those years, salaries. Marketing managers yeah, make over $100,000 a year. We're not going to get that kind of worth of inventory sitting in the visitor center. We had no, we had, there was, that was yeah, the you should really director. sit down. You should really sit down and just have a longer conversation maybe with some of the folks like Carrie Barnhart True. and other people that have really... I've had lots of conversations yeah. with them, and I don't just, have the don't problem with, with, with the disconnect is that is the means of what we're trying to achieve here is it's like it's, it's we can achieve exactly what everybody is talking about by contract that we can then the DMO is a problem with that. You remember the discussion about the DMO? We couldn't do the right. DMO with the contract. The town would either have to hold it or the county would have to hold it. Town so we have to DMO. have an intermediary body that then holds the DMO. No, we don't have to have that. We so now you're running DMO. tourism, but we were told, see, this is how we got here. So we were told essentially that you don't want government doing the tourism and necessarily so having, hold on, contract. and I having that person, that. right? Like that shouldn't be our thing. Okay, we get out of it. and We should outsource this because then we're taking government right. out of it because we're outsourcing it. Then we outsource it and now you're like, no, 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 bring it all to house. No, you're we, not no, going to no, get no, people no, in here for less than 180 you skip the step. Get, yeah. uh, you skip the step. Okay. Fine. I, I'm not claiming to be like a tourism actor, and I'm not saying that anybody here is a tourism actor, and so we should go out and acquire tourism expertise, but the means of acquiring that ought to be a contract that we can change when it's not working. This creates a thing that lives on its own and we can not kill legally. By, so, by the so terms we, of the so contract, we, did, we cannot change it. So it's it, because does say, it does that say lives. we can get out of it yes. in 90 yeah. days. Yeah. On 90 the very days. last 90 line, right? days. 90 days. Oh. Well, hey. Uh, why just well, look, you know what? Let's look at this. We did hire a contractor. The contractor came to us with best practices right. across the nation. Again, 17 localities. This right. is how, with the yeah. RP that went and out. And they were like, right. we seven, uh, to 17 localities. Right. So when we come back to this conversation, we did hire a contractor. The contractor forged the path forward which would best suit us and gave us multiple options and this from is a, from a strictly i'm taking a governance lawyer perspective they're taking a tourism perspective the which is like owner. give them I'm give them all the powers to do whatever they, they want i need to get rid of it no. i'm glad they're no, taking you can't, a tourism no, no, perspective no, no, all right can no, we just agree to look at this line by line real quickly and say can, what we want and somebody be the official like record keeper to make any sort of edits and get this back to the county that would be bad good. governance. Tina, can you take that? Bad governance is thinking you can run for it in house. <laughs> you do not give away power that belongs to the people to somebody they can't fire. That's bit, uh, anything else is bad governance. You don't do that. It's a bad so idea. It sounds like you want to run tourism still. Yes, it no, sounds like it's a I want to hire a contractor whom we can fire we when they're doing a bad job. We did hire a contractor. And they gave us all the best practices. We, we don't got have to listen to everything that they say, especially when they say, give nope. your power away. The fact, I mean, I just ask, because I, I, and, and I just, when we went from just hiring the contractor, which is what we did last year, we hired JLL. And the Joint Tourism Committee was the one that, you know, it was through them, but we actually were the ones that signed the contract. So we did that. What the re the reasoning for getting the 501 C six six or C6. six well it says C six I don't know five hundred one something um, isn't wasn't weren't we told the reason why we should do that is because they can they can apply for grants and yeah, stuff? Me, what me, is the benefit bring, of me, that? Let me kind of sum up the reasons for it. When the, <laughs> when the, when the, when the tourism department got dissolved, the thought was to get a consultant to run that department, right? And then we would still have tourism advisory committee, but it would be joint with the county and stuff where the committee would identify what the needs are and funding in the tourism department is JLL. Right. right. So then it got to the point where, well, we need to create a board 
because the board is allowed to get grants and transfer our DMO, but you can't transfer the DMO. We would have to dissolve our DMO, right. and they right. would have okay. to grant. That's why then, we don't want a board. Then around August of last year, they said, well, we can't grant a board authority because the General Assembly is going to have to give us permission. However, what we can do is create a 501C6, and then we would contract with that 501C6 or contract with another 501C6 that's called, you know, Happy Canoe, right? Yeah. And so that was where we are, is saying we're going to have this nonprofit group who will be the advisor, the committee, have the ability to get grants, have the ability to, through the DMO, have control of doing those things. So that's where we are. The, the area where we are is we would have a, a, a nonprofit organization. Each year we would give them X amount of dollars where that, if that's the point, we can decide that. I mean, BJ, you know, put up subject to funding, right? We could have that group, or we can go ahead and say, you know, the other option is, I'm just sharing the, or we could say, we don't want that. Go back, hire a contractor who's a consultant, JLL, and then just form our advisory committee that we did have when we had the tourism department. Either way, the difference is they, they share that the, that the, 501c6 allows us to leverage other funds and do things that we can't do because they're not technically a government entity. They have the ability to go reach out instantly and get partners. They have the ability to instantly purchase stuff. They have a little bit more flexibility of, of doing it. And so the, the concept was we give them uh, the tourism dollars and we trust that that nonprofit group is operating in a way with JLL to get input from the counties and towns to make tourism the big T as as McFadden would say and attract different type of venues and events and then they would partner it and if need be contribute some funds to to allow it to move forward now the difference is the small T with the community events there was some discussion among council that we still feel that the dollars we're spending in the big T, we need to still identify some funds mm -hmm. where we can have smaller events, right? An event of having a band downtown once a month, do more type of other, you know, food and truck, local events, right? For the, for, for the folks who are local. Well, the challenge we have is based on the revenues we have with tourism dollars, they're going to be competing against each other. That's the challenge. That's actually not the challenge. The challenge is now we have to have permission to do that. Well, well, according to this, and that's, you know, so why don't we, before we go through this, um, Councilman Thompson, I, I know you said let's go through it. Let's go through the tourism budget and give you all where we are with tourism dollars. All right. How that may show you that if we do more do this for some of our community events. Plus, we, we did this a special event policy, and I can't, Tina can speak about, we've already got a lot of applications on that. We got the special event coordinator, we got to fund that position because that's linked to all the special events that are going on in the town. And let's show you those dollars, and then identify how can we fund the $200,000 from our end. The challenge is also, we're still managing the visitor center. We're paying for the employees. Before I would, the main thing if we were to go this route is JLL needs to hire the visitor center employees. Because if it's the big T, it's cradle to grave. Because right now, we pay it and we, and we get reimbursed. They oversee the tourism, I mean the, the visitor center employees, but they're a town employee. And that's not really a good mm -hmm. thing. Well, so, I took the way she so, said tonight that they would be over. Mm -hmm. she, they yeah, will the be doing the Well, that, the so. existing MOA already says, the existing contract, they should have been employed. Wow. So okay. let's just let's just go through. BJ, you ready to okay. give the... Can I, can I say one, more, one thing, please? This hasn't gone through a legal review of the county board. Um, so... Until it's gone through a legal review of County Ward and County Ward is on board, there's nothing, there's no document that you draw it off. So Warren County hasn't reviewed this legally no. yet? No. It was just given to us by the purchasing officer and no. that was it? That's it. 
Yeah. I thought they were. Yeah, we we've, thought they we've had things like this over the last year. We could just never. I talked to the county attorney, and them. I had to send it to him. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, well, no. well, can we well, agree that we should then well, maybe we got ahead of it then if it hasn't gone through our legal review yet. I think you should go through a joint legal review. Yeah, and he and I, uh, I know Jason. Yeah, what's the point in doing back and forth and you can just sit down together and go through it? Yeah. I, I just really want to, I really want to, oh, you know, 2022 is our year to work with the county. Let's do it. Let's, let's figure this out. I absolutely, I absolutely want to go on record. I definitely want to work with the county. I, that 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 in no way. My question wasn't about that. It was about about asking well, I, for permission. I think, I think Jason and I can work well together. I've known him so we can talk about some of the things. I think a joint review would be better too. And as long as you're understanding what we think we need, then it should be fine. My my only thing I want to see on there is a cap. I would like to see some cap. Basically, a, a cost of general maintenance or some kind of cap in there that doesn't allow it to keep escalating or getting higher. And that was a point that Lori brought up. I would really agree with that. Yeah. The, yeah. What is Gary, Gary, we'll have to know the percentage that we have to spend in certain areas. Yeah. Of yeah. What we take in. Right. So Gary hasn't gotten here either. The other thing is, too. I know we're going to go up, go over this later. But why? Why did? Was there a reason why we thought it was a good idea to be non-voting members? I'm just yeah, curious. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't, I don't recall. I thought they said we it was a conflict of interest. I thought that we couldn't, council members shouldn't be serving on a, on a 501c6. Mm. Because it's, okay. it's made up of, hey. of their board. That's a legal okay. board. That's a legal board. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's, That's so it's a Yeah, okay, good to know. Well, there you go, yeah. Jim. Right. <laughs> right. There's another That's one for you. It's been a long time, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is everyone ready? That's why I think it's a premature this time. Part before the board. Okay, so this year, 23 revenue budgeted dollars uh, for lodging is 317935 like we was uh, talking about earlier there. As we mentioned, the town is not required to allocate those funds to tourism as a foreign county is. There on the bottom in the blue, uh, you see the fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 21 uh, dollars being carried forward from tourism that have been unspent. $162,440 for 22 is what we have uh, currently. Fiscal year 21, uh, $96,436. Um, we did receive a bill from Warren County just here recently for $56,000 that has not come out of there. Uh, they were in the process of reviewing, and that is for the, our, our portion of JMO. Uh, so, you know, roughly looking at uh, you know, $200,000 that uh, has been unspent we currently have. DJ, real yes. quick. You said we don't have to spend that on tourism. What are, can we spend it on? That's the, the town. Uh, the town is not, uh, does not have any obligations as to what we can you know. So, theoretically, we could spend that on our budget shortfalls identified in our last session. Correct. Okay. But the, the county does. Correct. Correct. The town is not required. This, I'm, I'm sorry if this is the wrong question, but so is this the same as, um, it, it, so there's the meals tax and the lodging tax. So there's two separate things and they're assessed on the two separate. Correct. Right. Correct. Your lodging is on your hotels, motels, uh, meals is on your prepared foods. So. The, um, on the bus list and the trolley, we're spending 60000 a year. I would suspect that that would be something that's self-sustaining. Like we charge people what it costs to get them around. That's actually the town portion of the, of the trolley bus system. That's split with uh, RMA and Warren County as well. <coughs> um, and uh, those dollars actually go back to uh, uh, Virginia Regional Transit, I believe. Uh, the revenue dollars that they collect off of the bus and then um, it's also subsidized by the state um, so I'm sorry yeah that's our match that's correct that's our match and that was something one of the goals uh, that, I that I was asked to find yeah it was normal. because that's where we're going to try to increase I mean that's again council's this is y'all's budget it's council's decision I think we're only obligated to 
$45,000? Yeah, $40,000, $45,000. So we put an additional fifteen. that would be a match with the county to expand and look at increasing our um, frequency of, of routes. But that's... But I, I thought that that would be run as an enterprise, like collect a dollar to ride it, 50 cents to ride it, or whatever it is. I, I, don't, I don't think, think they really make, 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 make any 60, money. We went There's no way yeah. that... It's makes, more of a service yeah, than it is. Correct. We wouldn't get any return on it. I don't even know if they it. charge half the time. I, I, I was here, so I didn't think, I think they were charging. Right yeah, during COVID. Yeah. It's been free. Yeah, it's free. It's free. You know, so RMA kids it. use it all the time. Actually, I don't know that they're using it right now because I don't think they're allowed to. Oh, yeah, they used they're to. not allowed. They are. Yeah, they uh, but to. they used to, but I don't think they're allowed to right now because mm -hmm. of, um, you know, COVID. But RMA is paying their share. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're still paying. Yeah. So, uh, carried forward funds there over on the right hand side uh, in the orange uh, is the fiscal year 23 proposed budget that we, uh, as it currently stands. So, we do have the visitor center part time personnel uh, currently the, as an expense for the town, $72,000 there. Obviously, if JL takes that over, we could you know, reallocate um, the professional services, consultant, joint tourism. Uh, we've allocated $100,000. So, between the Seventy-three, or seventy-two thousand for the part-time personnel, and hundred thousand dollars that we already have to set aside. We're close we're to close the two. To we're close to the two hundred thousand dollar mark. Obviously, we can you know uh, come back with uh, options if we wanted to get up to the two hundred thousand dollar mark there. And then uh, a couple of little odds and ends there as we go down through uh, the cultural activities, the grant funding, the nine thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, half of that um, is uh, offset by. Uh, the grant, that, uh, the arts grant that we received from the state, uh, that those funds have been allocated to the Blue Ridge Arts Council and the Blue Ridge Singers this year. Um, in the past, has also included the Work Forward Society, and I believe they may be coming back to us. Uh, when we get down to the trolley that we you know, kind of already discussed, it includes the additional uh, services uh, for the trolley. What are the dues and memberships? Something that we pay to be a member of something? Yeah, and. Different. I don't know them off the top of my head. It's just different. It'll be with local groups and associations and stuff, isn't it? Like the Chamber's one of them, right? Well, not necessarily not the Chamber, but if, if we need to join like a part of a, a local uh, uh, the tourism group with the state and stuff, just so um, Elizabeth can be part of some of the community events that they're for. Okay. And it may or may not. It's just something that we just not sure that she. I was just involved. asking because some of these I was like that when I'm thinking is then if we went with JOL, they had like twenty five hundred budget for something. That's yeah. why I was just curious. Yeah. This would be for this would more be of the just special for us. Event, community okay. events. Okay. Um, so then, yeah, the bottom there is special events and public arts coordinator. Uh, so that, uh, the that's the actual uh, salary benefits uh, all inclusive there at the seventy three thousand one hundred fifteen. Um, advertising office supplies and then forty thousand dollars set aside you know uh, specifically for town special events that we would fit you know, Elizabeth on the 15 right we're having the 15 she's going to give you all the presentation of all the events she's planning local events and the bands and the months and when they are and she's did a really great job um, pulling that together um, Tina I mean you would I mean it's, mm -hmm. it's y'all gonna be very impressed with her if we want to, here's the difference between what our special event does and the big T. The big T, they don't, they don't actually do the events. They work with partners and try to bring in folks. If, if, if we just go with that alone and don't have someone to coordinate some of the local events, um, we will never have really downtown events. I mean, there's no one in our, in our organization that can coordinate that. So we need some funds, and we've been working with the Virginia Tourism Group and, and others where we're trying to get some funds where we could do it. We also found out that we can apply for grants because we're DMO that is, can be specifically used for local community events. And so that's important that we uh, use that, and I think Elizabeth is also going to help on some grant, grant events. So um, the rest is, uh, uh, BJ said, so, where we are now is the difference between how much does council want to spend on community events and then how we fund the, the big T. 
and I, I think we're we're almost there. Yes, right? we're, we're very close. Very close. And and then the question is, is it sustainable? Do we want to continue doing that, and how we want to do it? Um, I wish Elizabeth was here to show you the presentation that she's talked about, but we don't have to make this decision per se on the events. But the bottom line, we need to do it because we're about ready to go into showing you all our budget and. Any other stuff would come out more of the general funds to, to supplement a lot of this stuff. I have a question. I thought we were giving our DMO up as part of the new. Well, that's a question you all. That's. Well, I was just that's asking because you're counting table. on using our DMO to still that, apply for grant. Well, that's that's on the table. Yes. So if we do but, that, we won't be able yeah, to. Yeah, we'd have to dissolve ours to give it to them. Give it to the 501 uh, C6. So, so you shared that. Back to this, I want to ask a question. Like one of the things. Right, yeah, we can go back to the. No, no. I, I mean, some of these things tied to this. So, lease the so Front Royal would lease the visitor center to Discover Front Royal. Um, how much would be? I mean, I, I, well, did we ever talk about that? For us to determine. That? It's us for us to determine. Okay. And or we can get a credit. For yeah. Oh, makes more sense. Yeah. It makes that more sense well, to get a credit get, for it. Yeah. Well, with the, the credit well, route, we'd, money for uh, we'd have to award it to the point because um, the MOA is split with Warren County, so we would just have to award it to where. If the only going, we're getting. If the, the credit town is going is to be a split, credited. or if only the town. But the town's the one who owns the visitor <laughs> center, so we're coming to the table with something mm -hmm. that's not cash, Over. but it's. Just something to keep. Yeah, that's asset. It. And the op for you. Also, we're, we're running the AC there, keeping the building clean. Well, not clean, but they're outsourcing the custodial service. But the exterior responsible for maintenance, making sure. You know, and to me, there's some value to that. If you look yeah, at that, that was going to be my next question. So it's leasing and how much. And then also, I was going to ask about, well, I mean, like snow removal or like picking up the trash, all those types of things. Well, if we lease it. Excuse me. So yeah, whatever we put, we would. Okay. Um, and then along the same lines, number two for discover for us. The other question I had was, how uh, it shows up in a couple different places. Except transfer of all assets, social media, and any other content previously created for and associated with Discover Front Oil. I assume they mean anything that's gone on over. Well, it's, it's on page spots. three, number five at the top. Okay. And then it's also on page two under Discover Front Royal shall, um, but we shall transfer all assets. So, uh, does that mean anything that's happened since we went with JLL or anything that it? The reason why I'm saying this is when I volunteered at the community center. I mean, there's there's the visitor center. Sorry. Um, there's a ton of stuff in there. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, well, the other thing coffee we're... bugs and every oh, possible yeah. thing that has Front Royal on it. Where where does that stuff go? Oh, they, they will want that. And also, the, the thing that concerns me, number five, and um, I should share, doing research and reaching out to individuals, Discover Front Royal was really created within the town, the department, when we had tourism. And the nonprofit group could be now discovered front royal too. So that, that also means um, I've looked at, at the trademark piece of that. Are we entitled because we've been using it? But I think they also will want to take the town's name. I'm not saying it's a big deal, but it is if a 501. It is if we uh, decide to kill it and be funded and keep what, it. You know, discover front royal. Uh, for years it's been the town's saying it. Mm -hmm. So the question will also be, I, I would, we may want to ask what is the name of the 501 C6? Is it important for the town to keep that, that homegrown name that's been around for a while, or is it something Could it be part to... of the contract that you're allowed to use it while you like are license. our yes. to, we while it. we are while you are our tourism company, yeah. you can use it, but at the end if we were to terminate the contract you would get you would have to terminate the use I yeah because let's say yeah, let's say 10 years yeah. from now other council yeah. members yeah. Sure. over here yeah yeah and then all of a sudden it terminates yeah then our tourism department wouldn't have that brand name right sure yeah 
Well, that's that's what I'm about assets. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I I don't even know how you I don't even know how you put a price on that stuff. I mean, the whole back you you yes. all have seen the whole back room is just full of stuff that they. It's not it's not actually at the visitor center anymore. We took it out of there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's in storage. Somewhere. Yes, it's in storage. But I'm just saying though, I know there that there are invoices from that stuff over the years, and granted, it may not that coffee mug might not be worth as much as it was when they bought it. But I'm just saying, there's a lot of that's a lot of merchandise. It's probably worth more now. Inflation. So, <laughs> huh? Just your shortage of mugs. Sell for a quarter piece. And I don't know. Well, I mean, there's you probably could wholesale it to a couple places. Like maybe Scott's business that has some T-shirts and stuff in it. Maybe it wants it. Maybe the Martins want some. So, no, uh, see what I'm uh, thinking is, why can't that be part of our credit? If they're going to take it to sell at the visitor center. Mm -hmm. I mean, am I am I am I sound like a yard it's an sale? Asset. Here? I'm no. sorry, I'm sound like a flea market. I, mean, I guess you could, but everybody's been talking about not putting that stuff up. True, not me. I'm well, just we didn't want to put the things in there before because we were, as I recall, council's discussion was there was a ton of money being spent on merchandise, and we weren't really making any money off of it. We were losing money. Off. Right, we were losing money, but I but now we've stored it. Right. Nobody can buy it even if they want it. Right, I know, but I'm we saying... Did, we went to the local merchants, and we did wholesale a lot of it out. That's good. Oh, you uh, did? And it makes yes. me feel better. To Main right? Street. So, but we, I mean, there's still a, a decent amount left, and you're correct. I mean, you gotcha. see, and I know they didn't want to sell stuff there, but I kind of, I never did understand that. Like, when we were going away to visit people and stuff, I'd go down there and get something that said Front Royal on it to, you know, to take it places, but whatever. So how, how come we just can't put a tent up down at the at the I mushroom and wine festival? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, your front row selling and, 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 and get rid of it. I like it. We can use that money to do employees' Christmas party. So why would, the question is, why do y'all want to give it up? That's what I was going to ask. I never said I wanted to give up merchandise. Well, the reason why because it has Discover Front Royal. Oh, okay. That's the reason they want. Um, and so, but it's your, it, it's council's property now. Well, it's so, the town's property. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah I know. Y'all, y'all are or taxpayer. Tax yeah, that's what so I was trying to that's the, Everybody that's get the, your shirt. That's the, the, that is the, the bulk of that. We yeah. could start a bunch selling of them now, but then they don't want us to because they want to be part of the 5126, which, you know, on, yeah. on business plan, it's, I, you know, it's not for me to say one way or another how the council wants to address this. My main thing we got to address is the DMO. Um, that, if, if I were to prioritize that, there's two DMO, and we need to be, everything should be subject to funding because I, I, I can't commit, and you all can't commit. I, I don't know if I can always come back with a balanced budget to fund a minimum of, of, of the tourism and match equal by the town. That, that's going to be a tough challenge with how we generate our revenues in the town. I just want to see. so those are the two critical things, DMO and how we want to match it. That just tell us the point that we should put a cap on it for, okay. for the town, you know. I mean, if $200,000 was what we've been paying into it every year. Oh, I see been, why it was a conflict of interest for us to be on the board. We got the bylaws to our email. Yeah. That you have to pay membership dues to be a member of the board. So, um, and to uh, you know, and, and also put in there that you know we can, as a locality, we can add more to it if, if we want. If the funds allow. And then also we need to have there's a the pressure when we go look to 501c3 the dollars the unspent dollars that they don't spend that we allocate that they can carry over those dollars and use. Yeah. If that's that's not how we do our budget per se. We have to come room. We have to identify a certain specific items in a purchase order, or we know that we're going to buy equipment or a bill. We identify. I think their their funding practice is a little bit different. If, if the council is comfortable just having the carryover because they are the nonprofit organization, we trust that however they're going to do it, there's oversight. We're fine, but we need to know that because how we track the dollars. In essence, what we'll be doing is giving them a grant. Pretty much each year and saying you know because uh, we were when we saw that there was unspent funds this year we were hoping to use some of those dollars to 
carry over against that two hundred thousand. Because, because yeah, because they were you know to identify what are you what are those true expenditures going to be used for FY twenty two, and then when you get that extra money, what extra you know how are you raising the bar with the additional dollars? And it's you're mainly just a zero year budget kind of concept. The way we do our budget, that would be interesting because then we could if we had those funds back, we could you know I don't know. That's, that's more responsible in terms of how the money is spent instead of, oh, we're coming to the end of the year, let's buy a bunch of stuff. Because I thought, when y'all were there, I thought they were going to come each year and propose a budget and ask mm -hmm. for dollars, yeah. but not carry over dollars. I well, that's what we said the night that we talked about the 501C, yeah. that it would be them coming to us saying, here's a budget, this is what we need, and then we decide what to give. Yeah. Okay. And, I'm, and I brought up that very same point that night. Sometimes people with a budget, it's like, oh, the year's coming at the end. All of a sudden, I need a bunch of post-it notes. So, so the takeaway, yeah. first of all, That's where are we on works. the DMO? That's how the federal government works. <laughs> where do y'all feel on the DMO? I just found out about it. I should stay with the town. I, I think we should go through it, make the changes on it that we okay. see a problem with. Yeah. I mean, you know. All right. Right. Is that the MOA or that's the MOA? He's asking about the DMO. DMO yeah. is the Destination Marketing Organization. Yeah, yeah because it says in Article 4, 4.1 4. Well, General Powers, the property and trusted the corporation. When we received the $170,000 for DMO, when we got the ARPA funds, the advisory group folks came together, we all came together, and we all concur about putting those dollars. The county gets it. They're the ones who are responsible for the funding and paying. The town approves it, and so there was that cooperation, I felt, that when we received those 170, we all agreed on it. The DMO, when we dissolve it to give it to the 501C6, ultimately, you know, those DMO funds and those funds were going there. So I just have one more question. Do we have, do we have a number as far as the amount of uh, revenue for that merchandise that you have on hand? Yes, there is a there is an inventory amount. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head, but um, um, when before Tim Smith left, uh, Matt had to do an inventory. If we can get that and send it out, I don't remember but, where we were at at the very end. The town needs to keep the DMO. Mm -hmm. I want to say something that has nothing to do with the DMO. I'm going to apologize up front because I've said this all along. I said it when I was running. I am a tight wad. That is just how I am. I'm just, and I, I'm still, I'm good, I'm good with things, but when I look at, so that, that budget, $180,500 for payroll, $25,000 for the visitor center personnel costs. And that doesn't, that's not even that. If they have to take over that, it's going to be more. But just what was there, that's 35% of the 582000 And on, to be fair, 73000 for that personnel out of 370000 is 20% of that budget. I'm, I'm, I just want to go on record as saying, like, I sometimes I worry about, you know, how much we spend on the, the overhead and that's not overhead that's personnel and that's cost but I just think that seemed like a lot on the budget and I and I hear what Latasha's saying that's what we pay to get experts and I get all that but I feel like that's a lot of money paying for you know I don't know I don't know you're just not getting a marketing manager for less than a hundred thousand you're not getting a director for less than a hundred thousand but we're not they're not just is there a they if you want one if you want to hire people you're right. not getting them for less than that to get that level of expertise but you're thought, not, you're but, not about that, but why are we why isn't why is it everything except this trolley under that one hundred thousand dollar light line item why why aren't we getting tourism for the hundred thousand dollars that we hired jlo for where are you at where is it trolley? Trolley? i don't see the trolley because it's it wasn't enough oh, bus system he, no he's talking about, he's talking about professional, about services. professional yeah. services gotcha yeah, I would think that everything would be under professional services, including the personnel, advertising, tourism, promotion, office supplies, uniforms, when travel and education. And I guess that's whoever put this particular when sheet together. GL takes it over, there. we'll all be under. Well, but will it still be 100000 It would be 200000 because that's JOL's 200, budget. So Except for the bus drive. Except for the bus, correct, and the cultural activities. So the, right. And the uh, art What do we, what's our, what's our legal department's budget? 
$468,000. All right, so this is, it just seems ex extravagant to me. Uh, like, it, it seems extravagant to me, and it's not a core function of local government. <laughs> local government. No, Roads no. are. BJ, when you have a moment, can you send us maybe privately, not, you don't say it out loud, um, <laughs> an email with like Felicia's salary and the budget as it was then to give council an idea of some of those numbers? We don't want to, we don't want to hire like well, that I don't, Well, I'm trying to make a point here that you're not going to get somebody or anything for less than 180000 But that's to do not expertise. What we, that's not what we're saying the alternative is. Well, the alternative I keep getting told is, well, we can just hire somebody. No, we, we said contract to somebody, contract not hire okay, somebody. Okay, but who are you contracting? Any firm that's willing to take over JLO six figures, yeah, we we did that. And but now you're not liking the suggestions that they've given. Well, that's a bad suggestion. Actually, in the previous proposed budget, um, so it's fairly easy to pull up. Probably has in the backpack. So, <laughs> so Mayor, Mayor and Council, what I what I understand the approach is that. We've heard some comments. We need to give you all option. Have Jim work with the county attorney. Come back um, and hope about the 15. We kind of have a more refined MOA. Is that area? Is that that's what? That's what I would like. Yeah, I'm just one person. Carry on. I'm with you. Well, we can we can get the grants and everything using our DMO, right? Correct. All right, so why can't we still use JLL and not create a 501c6? That's my point. I mean, why do we have to? Why do we have to create a board? And I understand what they're saying. I mean, it's like we're going to create this, this group, and they're going to have control, and we're not going to be able to do anything about it. We don't have any voting members. We can't dissolve it. We can get out of it, but why wouldn't we, we just hire JLL? Use our demo. Only I mean, the only reason they're creating a 501c6 is because for, uh, for grants. Am I right? Basically. I think that's one of the things we need clarity on, and specifically spelled out, and maybe that call back to Bethany to ask her would be helpful. I mean, we would have more control. We would have control over it then. I mean, JLL, we could. Well, if they so didn't. You know, we could fire my them. My biggest and, concern, and I just read through almost all the bylaws while sitting here that we were just forwarded. If we give up our DMO and the Discover Front Royal, and then, you know, we talked about earlier committing future councils to this, we lose Discover Front Royal. And Front Royal starts from scratch, even if we defund and fire and remove ourselves from this board. We have to start brand new all over again from scratch. Well, I, think we, I think we all just said that that could be written into the, I think, we could put something in the contract that says that remains... That remains our possession. We would allow you to use it like while, a licensing you know, like a licensing group. You've said that like ten times. Did you still remember don't last say time it. when we had the joint meeting? Didn't Carrie <laughs> Barnhart say that with a formation of a five hundred three one C, there would be an option to disband it if, there, yep. if it all went wrong? Yep. Yeah. But when it disbands it, and then looking at the bylaws, it says if we, we give Discover we, for Oil DMO up, we don't get it back. And Carrie said that too. The brand? Oh, she did. No, the, no, the, the, the name that. and all of it, the brand, the DMO, all of it. We can't get the DMO back. Yeah. We can't get a DMO, DMO back? No. I we disband. Could, though, Steve, so where does the DMO go? The it becomes the, 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 the DMO. The DMO. The DMO. If, if the 501 If we give it up, Jim, can we get it back? If we give it up, can we get it back? Not if you agree with them to lot. Correct. And that and Carrie said that as well, because like we could pull out of it and stop funding it, defund it. And the county continue, continue to fund it yeah. so we don't get it back. Oh, oh, right, unless there's something in the agreement yeah. as stated. So it's down to rewriting, I guess. I don't know. I don't think um, it would be I'm rewriting. I questions. think it would be amending. I'm giving some questions. Well, straight, yeah. Um, I'm get, uh, bleh, I just reached out to Bethany real quick for a question. Um, do you all want to move on with the budget discussion? Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like we've parked yeah. here for a long yeah. time. Well, I think we're just, it's worth understanding before yeah. giving away the no, amount I mean, of money. I agree, it's worth understanding all the, the smaller details. All right, so the action That's item is aggressive. myself, Ed, uh, Jim, the, their county attorney or assistant county attorney and the committee group kind of brush. We mark up our comments, send it back to them. 
uh, the best we can and probably have questions. Is that a fair statement? Sounds great. All right. Um, so this is uh, this is the start of our budget at the February 15th um, work session. I will be making my formal town manager's recommendation. This is going to be kind of just the, the highlight of some stuff. So if there's any like tweaking that you all see, that'd be important. Once I give you the town manager's recommendation budget, it's definitely in y'all's hands to um, decide. But again, our goals when we develop our budget try to link to each of our goals of how we fund it. Uh, the first goal is economic development and community events, infrastructure, the parents, communication, and our employees. So the goal one of economic development, uh, part of it is uh, council approve us moving forward with the rewrite of the comprehensive plan update. Uh, Frida is established. We had our first meeting in January. We're going to continue um, through uh, uh, Councilman Thompson uh, provided us a, 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 a group that also focuses on retailing and marketing and quality recruitment for, for businesses and stuff. It's been shared and that would help with the Frida. Again, the Joint Tourism Committee, it's still there. We're still working through some of the issues. Uh, retain and identify key industries and employers. We still got to reach out to make sure that the town employees, the town businesses we have, um, we need to start getting a little better handle on making sure what can the town to, can do to keep them, also expand the business. Uh, streamline permit and code inspection process, that's in the work so far. We've had favorable responses on the efficiencies and, and how quick we're getting uh, permits and plans through um, and stuff. Pro business and cup, customer service reputation, uh, that is our, um, our goal. We want to be known as a town that is pro-business, meaning we want, we want our, our, business, our local government, I mean our town businesses uh, to grow and we, we want uh, our town citizens to know when they come to us, we're going to be customer service oriented. <clears throat> yes, sir. I got a quick question about um, uh, business licenses and renewals. Mm -hmm. um, so every year it kind of sneaks up on me and I have to go learn how to do that all again and apply for it and everything like that. There's no automatic like notification to me as a business owner that says it's time for you to renew like I do for my taxes or whatever it gets sent to me and I can just fill out that paperwork that's sent to me and send it back in, pay my fee or whatever. And who's sitting out renewal? I'm not getting them. Well, then, uh, that's what I'm wondering. The but, yes, the renewals, the renewals go out the, uh, um, they go out the, um, uh, Does it go out the month that you started the business or is it the beginning of the year? Uh, it's the beginning of the year. They, they go out the first week of, of January every year. And they're due March 1st. He needs a Illegal gym. <laughs> 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 yeah, he needs it to, yeah, need to come. No. Well. So that makes sense. If it exists already, that's great. Now I just got to figure out why it's not working yeah, for me. We'll <laughs> Good. Good. Good to know. Problem solved. She will be sharing with you all the 15th each month some of the proposals we're going to do. Each month we're going to have an event and council. We're looking forward to y'all's input to see how that goes. And then the other thing is nightlife. Um, we're going to try to figure out why at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, I'm sure it's because of the foot traffic and volume, why uh, downtown uh, a lot of the businesses are closing early and stuff. And I know COVID-19 and getting employees is, is very tough, but um, when my friends do come, you know, they're, they're, you know, on the average it closes at 9 o'clock. Uh, infrastructure, we continue to fund I&I. &I, uh, issues. Uh, the redundant water line, we spend our ARPA funds on that to be able to go ahead and move forward with it. We're finalizing uh, some of the right-of-way acquisitions or easements. A pothole and paving overlay, we've heard from you all. We're continuing to increase the funding in that. Uh, keep in mind, um, these freezing temperatures, uh, we're probably going probably to have a heck of a time here in about a month with all the potholes uh, with the Asphalt falling out, it's going to start creating a he's, challenge for him. He's adding new ones with the water main yeah. breaks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, smart water meters, AMR, uh, we continue to do that and about ready to complete. I think we're up to what, 95%? Yeah, 95%. Yeah, that's awesome. um, and that's going to create a lot of efficiencies. So kudos to 
to Robbie and BJ um, for making that happen. And then also for the first time, we'll have a five-year capital improve, improvement program modeling. Uh, you all will be approving the FY23 capital improvement budget. And then the CIP plan is the, the five-year plan that's identifying some of our infrastructure needs. And so each year, we just go ahead and keep, hit the next fiscal year. Uh, apparent uh, dilapidated buildings. I know Councilman Thompson, you know, that's what we're going to discuss on the 15th. Uh, and, and then we're going to move forward with that. As, because we have our own code uh, department and, and me being the building code official, now we can aggressively look at those buildings that we deem that are unsafe and start taking action. Uh, and it removes the county's input on that process. Gateway and entryways, we still feel that there may be opportunities that we enhance our entryways. And so when people come to the town of Front Royal, they notice a big difference. There's more than just vape shops it's, here. It's just that wow effect. We're talking about more landscaping. If you see okay. some of our entryways right yeah. now, some of the signs are leaning. The lights don't really operate. Mm -hmm. The landscaping needs to be upgraded. Hey, thank you, Kevin. Um, and then holiday decorations. We want to make it a hallmark feeling. Uh, not only just for Christmas, but we're looking at also other, other uh, uh, holiday seasons. Go for um, video spotlight. We're still going to look at ways where we can start a uh, spotlight in certain businesses in the area, and just kind of have that um, that that conversation of you know, tell us the challenges starting up a business. How was it? And try to get the you know some discussions about some of our local businesses and share the news. The PIO and the FOIA timely and accurate news release policies. Uh, also, just from a standpoint of, of being more responsive to the media and press and having that ability where we have one person gathering all the information instead of the, the, the press going to different departments and getting the information. This way, they can go to one person, we collect the information, we're responsive, and it's consistent. It's, it's a common practice in localities, and we're a, we're a locality that is growing in a lot of <laughs> Did you say I, bullshit? I still, I still don't have the spelling of those names. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Mark's over there giggling, too. Um, Mr. Bridges, you're writing this down, right? <laughs> I was giving more time to write that. I heard it. I couldn't pass it up. I normally don't hear that. In a meeting, so that's still that. Payback's fair for that. I hear you. Uh, Towns Quarterly Newsletter. Uh, uh, we continue to do that. Mary Ellen, I feel, does a great job. But also, there was discussion, Councilman Cockrell brought up, about kind of having a different type of newsletter coming from council. You know, the quarterly council of, of some of the items and issues are going up, and so we're going to revisit that. Uh, enhance our website notification process, uh, so those people know how to get their uh, business license renewed and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then financial software system upgrade. We need to get that study underway, get the software in place before we do our AMI meters, which is funded. We're funding part of it this year, and then the FY24 we're going to fund. And then the automated call notification system, we're really going to try to move forward with that. So that way, if there is ever something that's important, we can send text messages or call all of our uh, customers, if they want us to, that have a a utility customer account with us so they could be notified. I really think that I like all the different So when everybody thought we cut their electrical I'm like, <laughs> so it's like, so like okay. Great. It's just, it you takes messages before. every day. Yeah. Avoid that area. Oh my God. Here it so is. that's part of communication. Our employees, at the end of the day, there's not anything getting done without them. Um, I don't take them for granted and I know council does not either and we've looked out for all of our employees um, and first is the new insurance for employees that's going to be great we we're able to keep our premiums low the other program we were going to have was a seven to ten percent increase uh, new position for human resource department I am proposing a new position right now it's just Laura McIntosh, by the way, she was promoted as our new HR director all employees all 169 employees are excited uh, well deserved. I was hoping she would uh, was willing to do it the last time, but I think she now is ready. She she said she is ready, and so we promoted her today, and she's she's she, we're very fortunate. Mm -hmm. The wellness program. We have a wellness program committee. They, they okay. meet on a monthly basis. They're identifying 
areas that they would like to try to look at ways to kind of enrich and, and provide some other type of wellness programs with the, the town. And it may be as simple as having a, uh, the type of um, uh, food we serve or, 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 or some other exercise, give an extra employee 30 minutes once a month so they can walk the town and just get out and go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I know. I just wanted to know if that's going to work in line with their health insurance so they can reduce premiums more. If you have wellness programs, typically you can get discounts mm -hmm. on the health insurance. Yeah, Gallagher, they mentioned something like that. Yeah. that they can they look at it over time. Over. It's, it's going to be tough because we're in that pool system right. and um, and also we're not self-insured but there's still we're going to look at a ways and I know we're looking at with the, the Gallagher where we're going to actually have a wellness software a program where it allows employees to like get a Fitbit and keep track of how they're doing from their phone. They, they brought that up. Yeah. Tosh, yeah. I remember. They, uh, yeah, because I asked about that, that before and they budget, said they could do there it. Was something but I wanted to make sure this particular committee was working together with those with Gallagher yeah. representatives so it was happening at all at the same time and we yeah. could start recognizing those benefits because they said we could even recognize those benefits in the first year with yeah. them. I'm just trying to keep their insurance low. And yeah. I thought they, yeah. so I thought we're they trying to make them double healthy. Do this bonus program and rates. Yeah. Quit smoking. Yeah. It'll lower your rate. Membership is part of a suggestion. You know, mm -hmm. and someone can join, yeah. or we help pay some of that or a portion part of portion yeah. of it. Uh, employee appreciation. Uh, yes. I do appreciate council recognizing employees that go above their normal duties. Uh, we continue to have uh, our annual. Uh, events for them and we give department heads uh, the opportunity to identify how they want to have employee appreciation day for their department and fund that succession planning so far a lot of promotions been within um, and we continue to try to grow our own employees and allow them the opportunity to cross train or, or take on different committee assignments and play that role to build their skill set and I mentioned cross training while that's in the, at the beginning stage, it's one of those areas that um, we see hopefully, uh, you know, there's opportunities for someone in public works and we've had success stories that may go to the energy department. And so there's going to be opportunities to do that. The unfortunate thing, uh, Robbie trains everyone and then they go and move on to other areas and that's why he's down 13 <laughs> positions. And we, we appreciate your training over there. <laughs> Coaching and annual performance reviews. This will be the first year we went to an annual review process instead of anniversary um, process. Uh, and also, council, I'm recommending that we continue to support an average of 4% pay raise. It doesn't mean that a lot of folks are going to get 4%, and there may be a few that get more than 4%. And then core training all employees. Um, we're still, we have our employee orientation program, but we're still looking at to make sure that employees are getting some of the core training that represents the values that we want and stuff. So they're, they're, it's important that they get those uh, core training, safety trainings, and basic, but all points. And then continue funding a council and staff retreats uh, to try to, um, you know, create that that atmosphere where we all want to work as a team together and, and identify goals. All right, snapshot of our total budget. This year it's $48 million. 2% increase of a million dollars, and that 2 billion increase is based on projected revenues that were going on now that we're out of COVID. Uh, and then also there's been some new restaurants and other businesses opening up. So we had about a million dollars to play with. 14.4 uh, million dollars going towards personnel of a $48 million budget. We have 170 employees. And then here it is, the general fund and special projects. It's a 12.1 million, 5% increase. Again, that, that is a uh, tribute to uh, new revenues. Uh, streets, we increased $2.9 million, 11% increase. Uh, and then electric, it's a 19.6 million, a 1% increase. And then water, uh, our revenue is down. So, and we're, we lost one of our larger uh, water uh, use individuals or companies, and then when water's down, sewer is going to be down. Uh, solid waste is flat. Okay, I got to I got to just say something. I just calculated this, so our personnel is twenty nine percent. I stand corrected. <laughs> Apparently, that is 
must be <laughs> in line. That must be what I mean. Well, I'm, we have I we have different services. <laughs> no, I'm not but, criticizing. But, I'm saying like I, now it makes me feel like I better. I'm gonna go look at the school system. Not only, <laughs> so maybe everybody is a third of their a thirty percent of their budget is personnel. That makes sense. Well, the target is I not the government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the school budget probably is mostly personnel. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope. All right, I'll get into the most riveting parts here. All right. More numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so revenue forecast, uh, just kind of briefly uh, goes over how I get the revenue forecast and what I do for it there. It's not precise. Um, I'm collecting data from all kinds of sources there. AMP Ohio, the consulting services. Uh, VDOT, Historic Trends, Institutional Knowledge, uh, talk to the town businesses, citizens, and of course get staff feedback. Even with their most reliable data, uh, level of uncertainty due to COVID-19 impacts. <clears throat> so, as Stephen was saying there, uh, these are our revenues uh, as they compare to fiscal year 22 uh, going down through. Uh, go into uh, each one of them here in a little bit more detail as we go down, um, but uh, general fund, $617,000 increase, streets, 296000 sorry. I'm just curious how we make money off of streets. It seems okay. like we're getting ready. Good question. Is it money we, <laughs> Good question. we were whispering over money. here, I was like, ask, All right. ask. So, <laughs> we, um, the, there is a transfer that comes from the general fund to streets, but we also receive uh, VDOT maintenance funding yeah. from from VDOT, and we uh, incorporated Leitron Parkway this year. Yeah. We got the money for Leitron Parkway, uh, finally, because we brought that into inventory. So it's a collection of taxes paid throughout the state that then distribute to the local Correct, correct, correct. Mm -hmm. um, but the helps, I mean, I, I can't remember exactly how much Leitron Parkway was, but uh, there, are, there is also a little bit of an increase in the transfer coming from the general fund over the streets um, to help support that. Uh, special projects, the increase of $217,000 there, and what that is, is the, we're allocating funds uh, to set aside uh, in case uh, it comes down to us having to repay the grant for the West Main Connector um, here in three years. So we're doing $216,000 a year um, for the next three years to um, help offset that should that come to fruition. Um, <clears throat> electric 1% increase there. Um, Water sewer. I uh, will dig into that here in just a minute. But, um, and then solid waste uh, is still going flat, which is great. General fund. Here's our increases. What we're seeing in the general fund: uh, meals tax, two hundred twenty-four thousand uh, dollar increase, twelve percent increase. The um, have a few more restaurants. I'm sure you guys can name a few off the top of your head there uh, that we have. Uh, sales tax kind of goes hand in hand with meals tax. And, so we're up $16,000 Meals there. tax, just yes. out of curiosity. That's an amount on the whole, uh, like, 2% on whatever the total meal. 4%. 4%, 4%, 4, 4 right. percent on gross sales of prepared meals. Okay, the, what I was trying to say is I'm wondering if that is reflected because everybody's prices have gone up. Some, some uh, there, that's a portion of it, but we have some big players that have come recently right. down the past okay. few years. Uh, I was just saying. It's also brought that up, but you're correct. I mean, yeah, I was prices say, increasing. Sub Subway's gone up, so yeah. I'm just <laughs> like, I can't tell you, I ain't in a Subway. No more $5 foot long. Yeah, the most inconvenient place ever. I think what I, my question from earlier was more... <laughs> I'm a Sorry. No, about no, is, <laughs> is either the meal, meals or the lodging taxes that we uh, collect are they restricted in how we can spend them? No. no. General fund dollars. Yeah. Uh, for the for Warren County, it is. All the county. Is that's that's what. <clears throat> um, Beep Hope. That's their business licensing. A uh, seventeen percent increase. Again, uh, uh, additional businesses coming in. Personal property tax. We'll talk about that here in, in a minute, but. Where uh, there's a 35% increase in personal property taxes because your used vehicles are worth more mm -hmm. right now. Um, the, I had a discussion with the Commissioner of Revenue the other day, and um, they're trying to figure out how to go about with the, uh, uh, the valuations of them. So I'm going to be coming back to council most likely here <coughs> at a future work session before we vote on the tax rate. Uh, to discuss that more once I get some more information. But the so we can all expect our used cars to pay more taxes? Yep. 
Yep, vehicles, see, not, vehicles. There's no more discount for however many years old they are. <laughs> no, the, the blue book value increased here recently. <laughs> correct, correct. Um, building inspection, $75,000. That is a new item, and that's uh, uh, an estimate. Uh, mm -hmm. So we will have to adjust accordingly as we move forward. And then there's our lodging tax down there at the bottom. As you see, fiscal year 22, we budget conservatively at $255,000 because COVID was in pretty much full effect when we did this budget. Uh, we're proposing three hundred seventeen thousand dollars for um, fiscal year twenty three. Yes, sir. All right. BJ, uh, where are we getting that seventy five thousand dollars for building inspections? That's our what we anticipate projections and, and potential, hopefully, revenues of those pass through of, of the inspection. But at the same time, uh, we we had a share a permit technician that we just had to fund process all the applications and to do everything else because that was an additional um, role that we, we just had to find someone who could do it. I mean, there was no other way. Connie couldn't take it on, board couldn't take it on, and so we had to have someone to keep up with all the permits and schedule this stuff. I, I just think that number is a little high. And and well, that may, helps. It may indeed be high. I mean, we'll have to uh, adjust accordingly as, as we go throughout the year. Uh, you know, uh, find it in other areas or, or what have you. It truly is a plug, <coughs> and you're correct. It very well could be. Well, and, we, BJ, we'll, and Lauren expressed that too. BJ, um, we used to get the, the breakdown from each department. Are, were we going to get that this year? As far as the budget? Uh, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what we're, uh, we're planning on giving it to you Monday. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Monday? Or Monday. Tuesday. 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 I'll get it straight. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not this Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 15th. I apologize. Say, we've been meeting about every week twice a week here. It's like, do we have another one? It's like, I thought we were getting a week off. Just show up. Like, I'll show up Tuesday. And I'll send out the invite, but we're going to send out a text. Yeah. yeah, Joe's going to show up Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Not Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> <Well, actually, laughs> Joe, don't listen to Amber. Real <laughs> 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 estate tax, uh, $1.7 million in revenue is what we received uh, in real estate tax. Mm -hmm. The Based on 2021 real estate value, one cent real estate yeah. tax rate is $135,505 in revenue. Um, the last reassessment was done in 2019. Reassessments occur every four years. Our next reassessment is uh, scheduled to be uh, completed by next year, 2023. Personal property tax, uh, see 2010 we've raised it four cents and then it's been 2011 up till current uh, 64 cents. Uh, I'm sorry, real estate tax were, uh, had built the budget remaining the same. Personal property taxes built uh, remaining the same as well. Um, Based on 2021 personal property tax values, uh, one cent of the personal property tax rate is twelve thousand two hundred seventy dollars in revenue. Hey, Roger. I just hope that gets reported. <laughs> we haven't raised our personal 12, property since 12 years 2011. In a row. All these 12 people, years in a row. yeah, all these people keep talking about how high our taxes are <laughs> for 12 since 2011. Well, we raised. It. <laughs> I think they're combining us with the county. I can go back and show for all it was 50 cents. It was a, that was a long time, it was 60 cents. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, that's that's something to be that's something to be applauded yeah, and, and reported. Have, it is. Have, Hopefully the next 11 will be out. We're the fourth. Uh, go back to the real estate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're a little that. Like you go take a picture of that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, if yes, you this that would be line great. The reassessment, the real estate. The reassessment yeah. lowest. Uh, exactly, 2011 yeah. was adjusted for equalization, and that's where that's where you're seeing your yeah. Here, move, BJ. He wants a picture. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready to point at it. Point at it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that. You don't need it. It's right there. You don't need it. Oh, I'll be Vanna. Mayor and Council, what I do want to share, and, and I'm kidding, but I'm not kidding. That's we need to really start thinking. Um, while we've been getting modest increases due to new revenue because of businesses, uh, at the same time, while our total operation cost is $48 million, because of some going to personnel, merit increase, insurance, all that's been going up. Inflation's been up 14% in two years. We're competing with Northern Virginia. 
eventually council is going to decide how we're going to create a sustainable uh, budget. And our true operation costs, like the police department over the past four years, it's only went up 10%. And, and so when we do the reassessment, even though we're equalized, it gives us opportunity to really determine, do we want to take advantage of, of those revenues but maintain the same tax rate? So I just share that with you. It's going to be a tough discussion, but eventually there's only a few ways we're going to get new revenue is either tax increases. I'm not saying that. Or managed re <laughs> reset. I'm not saying I'm just telling you. And you all know this. We're growing. No, grow our, 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 our economic piece of it, generating revenues, or the biggest part of, of spending more money on operation is when it comes to personnel. And I don't think we, we, we may not have enough, well, we don't have enough personnel to do pretty much what we're doing now, and that's the only word we could cut. There's next year, I don't know how we're going to be able to do a budget without significant uh, new revenue. It's going to be a challenge. Sure. And it's probably a little off topic, but I learned the other day that our school system budget is $65 million and we have $48 million expenditures. It's interesting. We we did, our town's 48, right? But it's enterprise, the bulk of that. It's only 13.2 million. I'm cool with spending more money on kids' education. And I'm just saying the town of Front Royal is smaller than the county's budget. Yes, correct. Oh, wow, that's personal too. Uh, you know, plus. you said we can do this, we can do that, or we can do this. I liked two, option two. Growth. Yeah, growth. Hey, economic. I'm just saying that, that will work. <laughs> so enterprise funds, uh, the, this is the sales um, attributed directly for electric, current, water sales, sewer sales. So it's not the entire fund, it's just the sales uh, for those enterprises. So electric current sales is up 3% uh, um, is what we're uh, predicting. The, and that actually comes, uh, it's based on Ant Ohio and GDS Consulting is where I received the, uh, the figures from. It's based on the, uh, the purchase power, portfolio, the weather, um, a whole lot of different things. And also the uh, water and sewer sales, what, uh, the weather comes into play on them as well. Uh, as Stephen mentioned, we lost a major industrial customer there. We're seeing a, a reduction in the uh, sales right now. And... Um, Sewer rates are much higher than water rates, so that's why we're seeing a um, bigger reduction in sewer. Uh, the, and then solid waste um, is equalized. The sewer sales does take into account a rate increase uh, that was proposed for the uh, for the sewer, uh, two and a quarter percent. It'll be here on the next slide. Water sales is not a rate increase uh, included in that, nor is electric or solid waste. The only only increase that we're proposing is uh, sewer. Um, this goes into what I just talked about there. Obviously, COVID plays a good part in the revenue. Um, last year, we did budget very uh, conservatively. Um, and then weather, uh, the major industrial user of the discontinued service in 2020, sewer rate increase, and then no proposed increases for electric water or solid waste. Sewer recommendation. Um, so we did implement a 3.5% uh, increase this fiscal year and uh, if since we're going to the plan is just to use the ARPA funds to help pay for some of our I, &I work that needs to be done uh, we went back and adjusted and it looks like uh, we can lower that down to two and a quarter percent moving forward um, okay. uh, the cost for 5,500 gallons of sewer which is average for uh, your average household is what we see here in front royal uh, you can see that the increase uh, uh, to, in fiscal year 23, should we implement the rate increase, would be $1.24. Um, and then uh, we'll carry forward there uh, through 2026 is what we're predicting so far. Is that a month? What's that? Sorry. A I'm month? Yes. Is that a month? Yes, correct. Sorry, I thought Yes, that's a monthly right. charge. <laughs> okay. So $1.24 uh, more for the month. Correct. Correct. Um, <clears throat> and as I mentioned there, water rates are not proposed to change for fiscal year 23. Uh, proposed revenues versus actual revenues. Uh, the revenues included in the 23 budget have uh, been projected based on the current trends and minimal impact related to COVID-19. Obviously, if COVID-19 kicks up again, we'll be coming back to council or you know doing transfers like we did a couple years ago. 
uh, to adjust accordingly. And then staff may request council to approve budget amendments if revenues appear to be tracking significantly different, um, different than, amount, than budgeted. Uh, one of the things that will be coming to council with just next week is actually a, a budget amendment uh, to um, regarding our fleet maintenance building. Uh, so we can try to move forward with that a little bit quicker because uh, as you saw meals and um, meals and sales tax sorry <clears throat> meals and sales tax are tracking a little bit higher so we're going to come back and try to advance that project <clears throat> I know we accounted for COVID situations and other things in terms of our budget which you mentioned a few times how are we accounting for <laughs> the skyrocketing inflation that we're experiencing I mean, how, can we account for that? I mean, cost of everything costs more. So when we project this building is going to cost one hundred seventy thousand dollars or whatever to repair it, I mean, in fact, based on our inflation and rates for services in general and things like that, I mean, it's going up. Usually, we take into what well, we take a um, take that into account if it's something we're projecting out. Um, you know, if we're going a, a year out, obviously that's a little bit harder. I mean, this should be fairly close. Mm -hmm. But if we're going five years out, we will put a, a Cost, uh, cost measure in there to, you know, what what is it predicted to be? Um, you know, granted now, it's much higher than what we would have anticipated, mm -hmm. and so we're certainly seeing that and adjusting accordingly. But um, um, we try as best we can. I guess is the best best I can tell you. I mean, it's honestly, like looking at some of our budget numbers, they're based on, and they're gonna have, they're gonna see five and six percent increase on just a lot of that stuff. I don't know. I'm sure you're thinking through that stuff. I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can talk myself up one side and down the other with it. Um, and it's um, there's a lot that goes into it, but um, I could I could be persuaded. I mean, I'm, there it's not definite. Believe me, it's, I wish there was a, a, a accurate way. Predicting it. Yeah. Expenses. So uh, these are the general fund uh, departments. All the departments that make up the, the general fund. Um, obviously, PD is uh, the biggest department there, and then uh, finance comes in second. But it just kind of gives you a um, look at where all the general fund dollars go. Um, you see tourism there, and then uh, Fort Council, fleet management, general properties. Just a high level overview. Is the repayment of the police station that we're currently in, is that included in that, or is that something? That's in a debt service fund. Okay. And that's transfer debt fund right there? No. Uh, the transfer, the transfer, um, yes, that is part of the transfer of the, the debt, but the, the, the transfer there is actually, um, that you're seeing, is the um, mainly the uh, street department. Um, uh, we're transferring roughly $700,000 over. Uh, the PD uh, loan um, is roughly $180,000 a year, I believe. What is our, oh sorry, there's a cost there for board of elections? That mm -hmm. Yeah, so is when, when involved with that. Well, I'm sorry? In terms of the town's budget, like what is that for? Because doesn't the county handle most of that stuff? We have to pay our portion of it when there's a town election. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's roughly $16,000. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. Yeah. Questions there? I'm sorry. <laughs> Personnel highlights, um, as we say, 0.4 million there of the general fund uh, budget is for personnel, 69% of the total general fund expenditures. Um, coaching and annual performance reviews, average of 4% performance-based merit increase. Uh, so the person lower on the totem pole may see 6%, whereas people higher on the totem pole may really only see 2%. Um, <clears throat> uh, but that's human, all. that's all relevant, though, you know. Yeah. It, I mean, it's all relative. Yes. The person that's here, their their six percent might not even be. You know, correct. I mean, yes. Might not even be a half of what somebody. Exactly. Is, so. You're exactly correct, and, and uh, it kind of equals it out. Um, the uh, human resource analyst. That's the new position for HR that uh, Stephen was speaking about, and then uh, special events and public arts, arts coordinator. Position has been funded. What what would that human resource analyst? What, what I'm curious. What's that? Well, right now, <coughs> Lord does everything: payroll applications, right. health benefits, retirement, uh, workers' comp, and so this person would absorb that. So Laura and and can focus now on personnel, policy, training, handbook, um, 
much larger program stuff. So our personnel department was two staff. Two staff. Well, plus it? one of my one of my people sheer sheer position. One okay. of my people was going up to, to assist in assuring my staff yeah. right now. Gotcha, gotcha. So we're okay. feeling it in multiple sure. areas. I, I don't like adding positions. No, I know. I we'll just know was curious what that one. was. Oh, yeah. Analyst was. Yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. But next year. So going through the goals as they relate to the um, uh, to budget expenditures, uh, economic development and tourism, we have forty thousand dollars for the special events uh, in there. Uh, tourism uh, by itself, uh, two hundred forty-seven thousand dollars. That does include the, the trolley and everything there on the uh, front page, you know, with the exception of special events. <clears throat> Ten thousand dollars for the cultural activities there, um, Blue Ridge Arts, uh, Blue Ridge Arts Council, uh, Blue Ridge Singers. And then $18,000 for the EDA boards and salaries has been included into the fiscal year 23 budget. If we're moving in the direction of the trolley not being a tourism item and being a public transportation method like we talked about in our last working session, could we move it out from underneath of that tourism mm -hmm. bucket and put it into yeah, public like transportation or something? We can create a new department if we want to. I mean, well, I, mean I just feel like... It's under tourism, right? It's on it that is. line. But I feel like that's not really where we need it. It needs to be someplace else. It's yeah, a, it doesn't. That, that, I, I feel like overinflates our tourism time. expenditures by putting the trolley under it. Because honestly, are people coming to Front Royal or even riding the trolley as a tourism function? I think Gary had spoke to wanting that to become the case with parking difficulties. He wanted people to be able to park in different parts and visit different parts and ride the trolley to the downtown events. That's true. I think that was the goal was to get it to eventually yeah. for assist everything. in that. So we drive yeah. in the direction of it being more tourism oriented or back to our discussion last time about like it. Park at the park at the oh, I thought we were going towards it being more tourism. tourism. No, more of everything. Like a public transportation system. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, like it is a public transportation system, right. but making it more robust and more people actually using it. Because right. we do have people that use it for work. Yeah. And I don't know if you... I can't remember, but I had said it would be nice to speak with some of the yeah, organizations out in the corridor, corridor yeah. and contract yeah. with them and get yeah. them to put some money towards Their employees. It. Yeah. It's all perception that you're using there. I mean, yeah. It doesn't affect the bottom dollar. I know that, but when I see that 247 and I think there's actually $60,000 of that, yeah. and I certainly understand it to be on that line. Um, if that's where we want to go, we can certainly move it over to the department. Infrastructure. $172,000 for the primary paving plan, $264,000 for the secondary paving plan, uh, $740,000 for the water line upgrades that goes in conjunction with the paving plan. Uh, we have $80,000 for a PRV uh, pressure reducing valve uh, vault, and $200,000 for I and I abatement. This would be in addition to uh, the large project that we're getting ready to bid out. Uh, this is mainly the items that pop up that town crews take care of. <coughs> Goal three appearance, uh, seventy thousand dollars for property code enforcement is uh, uh, carried forward. Uh, Ten thousand dollars for holiday direct decorations, and thirteen thousand dollars for landscape beautification. Goal four communication, uh, we have forty thousand dollars in there for special events. Uh, Fifteen thousand dollars has been budgeted for PIO services. $15,000 for our form updates and then $7,000 for the strategic plan to go in conjunction with the budget. That form updates is a one-time cost, right? We're going right. to update them and then yeah, so that's a lot of money. Yeah. In there for well, some of the requires, <laughs> but it's going to be on the digitalization. Oh, yeah, digitalization. Right. That's right. That's right. Like a business license. I'm with you, Councilman. We're, like we're way behind. And, <laughs> Our employees, um, so $438,000 is going to the uh, homeless space merit increase, uh, again, 4% on average. $106,000 uh, is for the medical insurance increase. We budget 7%. Obviously, that could change uh, once we get on board with this new company. Um, hopefully, it'll be a little lower and we can adjust accordingly. And then uh, $202,000 for training and receipt uh, retreats. Um, that's all. Of, uh, that's across all the departments. Uh, some departments are more than others, obviously. Uh, includes PD, electric, public works, uh, all of us. 
So we have fifteen thousand dollars uh, set up for the Main Street walking mall concept. Fifteen thousand dollars for the form update. Uh, landscaping standard plan, a thousand dollars. Street standard, uh, five thousand. Floodplain update, five thousand. Stormwater management, fifteen thousand. Strategic plan linked to the budget process, seven thousand. Sidewalk, curb, gutter, general plan associated with paving, two hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars. The AMI for electric meters, this is going to be uh, the first of three years that we'll start to accrue the money uh, to uh, get that done, $500,000. Bond rating for financial consultant, year one of two, uh, $37,500, so we'll um, do that over two years for a total of $75,000. HR employee handbook and compensation study, $35,000. Uh, the shelter for the trolleys, that's the concrete pads because the, um, the shelters are uh, given to us, $5,000. And then the public transportation, which includes the additional funds for the additional services. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, funds for additional services, $60,000. Um, total of all those comes to $885,000. Questions there? And the good thing I was just going to ask Stephen, when, when, um, when would we put that uh, the Main Street Walking Mall mm -hmm. concept design layout? When would we put that out? July 1st. July 1st. We got a lot of the information. This will be, if council approves it, we're going to have to put extra potentially benches and, and mm -hmm. other type of safety measures to close down or whatever council decides. Right. There will be some stuff, some curb and cutter adjustments and stuff. So yeah. um, July 1st, we'll try to move forward. But then council really needs to make a policy decision at a certain point when we make proposals if this is really something we want to move forward with. This is this is fifteen thousand to get it designed. No, really, uh, we messed up. It's more of a amenity. It's like we're going to have to figure out how we're going to close the the road. We're going to have to make sure how we're going to trash, trash cans, trash cans and, and stuff. And hopefully, we have some of the dollars. Probably you look like you got something to say. No, you're, you're right. Like Crescent <laughs> Street, right? Or Main would be yeah. a big one. And we're thinking about even Cloud Street and um, and. Uh, High Street. High Street, kind of consider closing that. That's where potentially, you know, other events, food trucks and stuff like that. So I understand the process, though. It's, we're going to hire somebody for whatever the dollar now. Somebody's mm -hmm. going to come back with us and say, these are our options for closing Main Street. Correct. Correct. And that's going to happen before July? No, uh, no that's going to be... Sorry. The funds start July 1st. Funds start, but we can start the process. We can bid it out in May or June. And yeah. Then yeah. We can have it ready to go come first. Because yeah. the money can't be spent until July. Yes, correct. Yeah. So we can go ahead and get the process going, and then yeah. when July 1 comes around, we can yeah. we'll have, yeah, we'll have yeah. everything lined up. <coughs> and some of the, again, some of the information we already have, just need to dust it off. Um, I, I still have a couple questions about the public transportation. I wonder, like, if it's a joint effort between the town and the county, like where, where, who services the trucks and who buys them and everything else? Is that that's the Virginia, 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 Virginia Transit. Transit? Virginia Transit. Yeah, they take care so of all they, that. They they provide the trucks. And the what are we What are we putting the money for? Our services. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So we give them sixty thousand yeah. dollars, and they have to come and they can give a report. They give your ridership. But it's a, it's paying for a match that they get from the federal and state, as well as other areas. We pay only thirty percent of their total operation costs. Okay. So it just looks like we're we're deciding to give sixty thousand dollars, and really, no, I, I don't know what we'd be getting out. We'd be getting increased service, but like like I was saying in the last. In the last meeting, it's like it needs to be increased service that people actually use. I mean, if you just throw a truck on the road, we're just wasting money. I, I, I'm concerned about like how we're going to grow properly, and that's an answer that the state brings us, and then we give them the sixty thousand dollars. Like, are we? I don't want to commit to six thousand dollars without a good plan. So fifteen thousand is actually what we would grow. Currently, right. we we budget forty five thousand dollars now. Uh -huh. And fifteen thousand dollars is what we would grow, and I, and I believe it was some additional stops. Um, and is what it was. Yeah, and extended yeah. services. And maybe so hours, about, like, I think. The, the trails. And stuff yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Uh, Council Lloyd, if he's in the other lot. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> At least we're calling it the right thing. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. I saw so that. I would say tourism, <laughs> but it says public transportation. So that's good. Glad to see that. We can connect you with with their. Uh, <laughs> Our, our contact person, he's been, Mike, he's been, he gave presentations if you want to kind of ask more questions about how. Yeah, he gave us a presentation. Yeah, he gave yeah. council. Yeah. 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 NSBRC real contact good, yeah. is good too because they do all that together. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. I'd be happy to be connected. Right. So, next steps obviously, I need to change February 14th to February 15th for the work <laughs> session. <laughs> no, February 15th, February 16th. <laughs> Yep, exactly. So then the uh, um, then the advertisement for tax rates, we'll have to uh, send that out. Uh, March 14th, we would have an additional work session uh, discussion as needed for the uh, budget and tax rates. Uh, March 28th is when the tax rates uh, would, the public hearing for that would be in an approval. And then April 25th, public hearing and approval for the um, um, budget for the appropriation ordinance. Uh, so just uh, the next item on the agenda is for the tax rates, but uh, the town has to supply the Commissioner of Revenue's office with the approved tax rates uh, in April to avoid delay of mailing of the tax bills. So it's just something to keep in mind when it comes down to that March 28th date. Um, we we'll have to really need to approve them or uh, we'll have to work out something with the uh, Commissioner's office or uh, maybe hold a special meeting if we had to for the tax rates. So that was... Yeah. All right. Any questions on this before we move on to the tax rates? Right. Next item is tax rates. Um, yes. Advertisement of the real estate property tax rate board. So, uh, this year 23 budget is built uh, using the same tax rates that we have in place currently 13 cents for real estate tax and um, 64 cents for personal property tax. <laughs> what we would uh, like for council to do is uh, allow us to advertise at the current rates, um, and then as we progress and get more information uh, from the Commissioner of Revenue's office, obviously we uh, brief council on it, but um, to at least um, advertise. We can always lower the rate, but we can't go any higher. But, um, so what we'd like to do is just advertise for the 13 cents and 64 cents. I'm good with that. Yeah. Everybody good with that? Yeah. 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 Thumbs up. Very good. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank quick you. enough. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, BJ. <sighs> All right. Up next, open discussion. So before we start talking about other things, I got something that I've been asked to read here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so because it was beyond council's control that the regularly scheduled monthly work session for February falls on Valentine's Day this year. A day which, while not an official holiday, is an important day each year for celebrating relationships, relationships with our loved ones. I ask Council's consent to reschedule the work session from February the 14th to February the 15th at 7 p.m. Do so I have everybody's consent? At Town Hall. Got it. It's 7 p.m.? 7 p.m. Okay. All right. Everybody good with that? She means they got a bad alley, so. <laughs> you thought you'd get out of that, didn't you? I thought I was you were like, God, I'm sorry, um, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> I mean, I got one thing. Anybody else have anything? I, I got one thing, too. But, um, any word on the sidewalks? I know we had a resident who was up in arms. Um, are we looking into that, Stephen, and, and see if we can? I, I, I know. Um, I know it's awful tough to regulate, and I know we're we're short in the zoning department. But is that what the issue is, or we just don't have enough people to? Um, I tell you, go out I, and check. I, I, I was riding around just checking things out. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it's and horrible. there's no way. I don't know how you can. I don't know what you can. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, by the well, time you sense, I mean, they're calling for what yeah. heavy rain tomorrow, I guess. Or or it's, it's yeah. supposed to be a high temperature though, so yeah, hopefully that will 50 help. 50 but, but yeah, I've been Heat seeing the sidewalks. kids walking to school on the roads where we do have sidewalks. Yeah. So right. So, Mr. Heat Wilson, to answer your question, uh, what I do know is that the weather has broken up some of the ice, not so much snow, and I do know the public works is aware and where there's what we call our, our, our snow emergency routes. We're also going to be looking at a way that those snow emergency routes also seem to have a high pedestrian traffic on the sidewalks. And so next year, try to figure out a game plan 
uh, to remove it. I know currently Robbie's going to do his best with the limited resources he does have to, you know, the sidewalks are clear, but I know because of pushing snow, the ADA ramps are blocked. Yeah. And so we're going to try to target on that next week. Hopefully the, the, the weather breaks up. Uh, uh, Kathleen, she's, she's already worked on potentially coming back with a uh, code amendment to how our current code is written. And we plan on bringing that obviously maybe two or three months down the road in preparation. But the issue we have now, um, I could have sent out hundreds and hundreds of notes. Mm -hmm. And we would have had to either put abrasives down, get a contractor, or clear it. And then we would have been able to, uh, you know, add that to their tax bill for reimbursement. I think because of the snow event, I don't I understand it's a balancing act between yeah, trying to provide yeah. accessibility to all of a sudden someone getting a, a seventy five hundred dollar note because I don't think we communicated as well as we should of responsibility. So the action plan is we're gonna do a better job of communicating what people's responsibility is. We're gonna come up with a, a code that council's gonna to have to adopt and then once we adopt it, we're going to reinforce it. And then we're going to go ahead and also look at ways to get an on-call contractor who would do that work. So whatever the cost of, of that contractor to do it, because we don't have the resources, where our main goal is with the primary roads, subdivision roads, um, that will be billed to the homeowners. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, we're taking, I'm hoping, typically we don't have this issue. Uh, but next year, just in case, uh, we will have a, a new code, and if council approves of it, we're already going to have the format letter to be sending it out to residents. Is there any way we can send out maybe a newsletter with yeah. the electric bills that reminds our yeah. residents that they are responsible for the sidewalks in front? We need to send out some type of communication this yeah. year because I've lived here my whole life and I have had snow well into April. I mean, second, third week of April we've had snows here. So, just a couple of years ago, actually. So, if there's any way to set up a communication, I, you know, I just recently moved to town in the last year, and I had no idea. I lived beside a business, and they came over and told me, but I had no idea moving into the town that I had to shovel the sidewalk. Right, we'll send, we'll get the <laughs> do, do you remember us funding a, a, a contract to supplement our town services? But it was for snow removal of the streets. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. for yeah. I, I just, I just have a comment. So I'm just wondering, talking about contractors and stuff like that, is there any purview on that contract as to what streets were done by the contractors versus which were done by town employees? And I mean, that comes back to that question because I mean, I'll just say, I feel like snow is kind of piled up in certain places that was just impossible to remove. Like, I mean, just throw down as much salt as you can and hope that it melts some of it enough to, to shovel it. Um, but yeah, I'm just wondering, can you, is there anything you can look into that? Because I'm just curious if some of this was maybe we need a little tighter contract oversight on some of what was done. Because it just seemed, it seemed like, like you talk about the ADA ramps and other things like sidewalks that. You, or we're shoveled by business owners and then there's just a pile. I mean, what is the business owner supposed to do with that right. five and a half foot high pile of ice? Yeah, yeah. Well, was the well, town supposed and that's to do still on my road same. because I live on an off street. I mean, there's, there's you know, there's yeah. only street parking on my road, so there are still the mounds, but yeah, so. I don't understand the solution to that. I don't think it was negligent. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there was cars to go around. Yeah, like so, like, my, whole, my whole side of my sidewalk is still, you know. I mean, we can can you show me your sidewalk? Uh, what is it? An act of God situation? Send me a letter. Control, Send me a right? bill. Just, that was ice. I'll look to see sure if Chris Brock was in here. Maybe the contract isn't specific about what to do in certain circumstances. Send you a letter. She just invited me to shuffle it. What I do know. You got kids. I want to get out there with their little trucks. They'd write an article about me with child labor. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not the only uh, the town on the side. that's dealing with this in the city. There was a list server and all the managers were asking how are they dealing with sidewalks. But what I do know is driving through other localities and towns, I think our public works folks did a really good job in getting the main roads and the secondary roads and subdivision roads open. But can we always uh, look at ways to approve? Yes. And, but a lot of it's going to also require council to be able to support the new um, uh, code that we're going to propose and then 
enforce it. And then so. are we able to do our part for our pieces in town that we're responsible for? And along Leithrun Parkway, the sidewalk on the side of the hospital, is that the hospital's responsibility to clear that? Yeah, and then some of it's from front of the schools, so is that the school's responsibility to clear that? It's the school's responsibility to pay that? Yes, any, any, oh. any like property that's that going I know what their budget is, but I'm just telling you it wasn't clear. All right, so I'm glad you said that. And I, I, if, I, would, I would love it if you would say that again, because there are a lot of people that are under the understanding yeah. that well, we it was our it job, that it was the town's well. job to clean off leeches, runs. Sidewalks. The part in front of Valley Health is Valley Health's responsibility. The part in front of the school is the school's responsibility. It's clear that that yes, but all the rest of the property. That no, we the rest own, of it, I guess, is the town's responsibility. No, it's not, no, front, it's not. whoever owns that. And anyone, it's property. Anyone who owns a property that's that butts a sidewalk, they're right. responsible for it. But going I mean, up there is there on that right side, right? It's commercial. Is there, is there what's there? There's not a building on the there. right side going I, towards the hospital. Yeah, going up well, that Well, first it's the church, and okay. then it's just a. I don't There's a bunch of grass. I'm just like I don't somebody owns grass. It. We don't know. Yeah, no, it's file. commercial. Heptad. Heptad. Yeah, yeah. Somebody called yeah. that. And they used to do it the other day. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Did they sell it? No. no. It's under contract. Allegedly, they sold it. Did they sell it? No. It's under contract. Allegedly, getting this close. But that is good for us to clarify that because I do believe because I've had several people ask me about that. Why isn't the town? clearing off certain sidewalks and I tried to explain it and I don't think I, I must not have done a very great job. I was waiting for to clear off my sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Anybody else? I got one more thing. Um, I, I was surprised to find out that the cameras down at the gazebo area in the pavilion um, don't have playback. It's only live shots. No, those are recorded. Those are recorded? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because I was told by the dispatcher here that um, they didn't have playback. Let me, let me, let me look into that. Okay. I, they, 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 they may not have, they might not know how to play it back. Our dispatchers do not have playback that has to come from IT department. Okay. Yeah, but our dispatchers have live monitors. Okay, so. all right, thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, right. Um, so all right. Anything else? Town manager update. That's um, not on here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tomorrow, myself and some of the council members will be joining us for the local government legislative day in Richmond. Um, also, uh, we do have a BZA app application. Uh, uh, shared it with Lauren. Uh, we feel that. It may be someone we need to go ahead and move forward with. We can either have a closed session, you all talk with the individual, or uh, our, our meeting on February 28th. Uh, after I just share with you the application, you all go ahead and, and, and vote the individual. But your call, it would require a closed session just to stop. I know the 15th, we don't have a closed session, and so it's just one uh, applicant. Uh, Could you interview them before, like yes. you're done, and then we? And then we, you know. So you'd like to add a closed session to the Well, that's up to you all. Or do you, for one employee. I'm not. I'm saying just trust Lauren and my uh, uh, recommendation. And then um, on the 28th, uh, okay. we, we submit it and you all decide if you want to go ahead and do it. But Lauren did review it since she worked at the BZA. Sounds good. Thank all you. All right. Steve? Um, yes, good. I'm sorry. Good. Good. Uh, also, uh, Monica in our um, permits department, she, I think she helped us out a lot. Uh, the town can join another locality for the local board uh, building uh, appeal. And so I think that that would be something I would recommend council do. We can look at another locality and then that way it would really remove any perception or conflict. So if there's ever someone who wants to appeal my decision, uh, they go to the local board. I know that we've been trying to get individuals on there, but if, if council would like us to explore that direction more, uh, partnering and going into MOA with another locality that they would serve our uh, uh, appeal board, I really believe that's the route to go. That's cool. On that, on that same department, is it possible to find out what it would cost 
give us a cost what it, what it would be to have our own inspector. It would be either that or two part time inspectors. Part time because right now, I mean, yeah, the person getting the permit they're gonna pay for the inspection. Mm -hmm. But can we you know increase the permit fee to cover to help cover the cost or, or whatever for the, the inspectors. Uh, yeah, we, we can bring back any proposal. A new inspector uh, with benefits and everything would cost about seventy to seventy five thousand dollars. A part time because we wouldn't have to pay benefits could be between thirty five uh, to forty five. The challenge is how to find one. Um, you know uh, and so we could have a, a general inspector and that would help out with some of those smaller inspectors like MVP, potentially mechanical, electrical, plumbing, uh, and maybe some footings and maybe some of the rough outs and stuff. So that would be helpful. Structural, obviously, and, and foundation, we'd have to go somewhere else. But it's if council wants me to explore that, that's that's uh, up to council. Um, right now, the average, just to let you know, the average inspection for a, a, a home, just the average home is between uh, just plan reviews and cradle to cradle all the inspection is between uh, 900 to 1500 dollars um, and so you know that's the cost for the service to pay for itself and what's so what's the average cost coming back for uh, plan reviews the average cost is about 500 to 800 dollars depending on the on the size of the building that's about a 2,000 square foot building what are they charging an hour for they charge in, in quarterly increments. It's, a, it's again, it's $125, but if, if you got a simple, uh, let's say a 1,300 square foot home, one level, uh, not a lot of other stuff, it, it may, it only may only take, you know, uh, a half hour or, or a little bit more. So it's $125 an hour. But if you have a large home, uh, like a 5,000, 6,000, multiple baths, m multiple HVAC, you know, units, um, the, the shape of the building, I mean the shape of the roof, it may, it may go 1,500. Um, when they put in the proposal, once we identify the square footage and every, all the components inside of it, it it's different. Is that plan review for uh, the MEPs and building? Yes, it would be a combination. It all depends. So, but it's safe to say, you know. So, commercial, it goes without saying that you know, we would, would want to do plan review for you know, building MEPs and stuff like that, but is it necessary for residential? Well, I mean, the building goes without saying. You know, yeah, the MEP. We got to have, you know, we got to have, you know, certs and stuff like that, concrete, roof trusses, you know, and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, but, most, most plans that some homeowner, or well, say if you're going to do new construction, most plans are already engineered stamped that you receive. But so. uh, I know for, for residential, they usually don't come with plumbing, do they? I mean, I've never seen them. No, I mean, you, you know, you get, the thing so, about it is you can get, uh, when you get a set of plans, sometimes it'll have... <clears throat> electrical on it but it's just basically yeah. showing you where you know your devices and stuff yeah. are at i mean that's nothing that yeah. you have your inspector come in and he and just goes by and checks everything make sure you have the uh uh you know right distance from one alley to another or the lights where they're yeah, supposed to be and, and that's what i'm saying I mean, yeah. you know where i'm going with this I mean, yeah. as far as you know i uh, um mechanical you know you know, yeah. I just know what you're doing. Yeah, you there's know, no, what, there's no need. I don't, I don't, you know. Wide review, yeah. And I, I know, you yeah. know, we're not allowed, and then I get all that, but, you know, when it comes to plan review for residential and allowed, the only thing that gets plan review is the building. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. so when it comes to commercial, you know, it, it's pretty well. Yeah, you know, yeah. the fire yeah. suppression stuff, but we, yeah. we still, mm -hmm. you still got to go out and inspect. Yeah, go out. And, the, yeah, but the, the thing about it is, I mean, just when you turn it, down. when you turn your stuff in, they're basically just reviewing the, yeah. the structure itself. Because yeah. when they come out, you want to pull a plumbing permit, and they'll have you'll have your uh, um, uh, device. Like it'll, it'll, it'll ask you how many toilets, how many sinks, whatever. Yeah. Um, the same thing with your uh, your electric. Yeah. Um, they'll ask you how many devices, whatever. But there's no plan for 
Well, usually your plumbing or your uh, you know what are the show you the bathroom. It's not going to show you where to run your your little water line from point A to point B. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things though that that extra funds would get, and, and if you recall when we started it off, we identified some way for it to pay for its services. And I did share with you all that there would be potentially a 30% more additional cost than it would be in one county. But the difference is you submit your plan reviews within a day or two, you can pick them up. You need an inspection the next day, while my understanding in other areas is it's taken much longer. All right. And so that's the difference. It's like you're going through a drive through McDonald's. You get an instant hamburger versus going to Martin's and buying them and cooking it. It, it, it does cost a little bit more, and we're, we're trying to work. We met with e, e, ECS today um, based on the series of questions that even George Klein asked at our uh, regular scheduled meeting, and we're working through those. But, um, you know, definitely I would like to look into having a general building inspector, either part-time or full-time, uh, but the, the cost is the cost of outsourcing it now. Coming up with the checklist and determining what ECS does versus what Warren County, there's the standard and, and Councilman Gillespie, you know, of what is required even for residential and commercial. I would probably say that they are using the, uh, the, the normal checklist that, that they've used other areas. So I'm open to, uh, you know, suggestions and ways we can lower the cost, but what we are providing is way much better uh, service and, and, and and limited multiple bites at the apple. Um, I, mean, I, I know if you come in with the deck for a deck, we already got a permit and layout and approval. It's like $45. You know, you don't have to spend any drawings. As long as it's due, because all we care about is checking the footings and depending on the height, do some more. So, would be a, a typical thing, right? Yeah. Because you would have a, 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 you know, a quasi town typical. And, yeah. Uh, and it's like $45. So you're saying now if it's taken basically a day to review uh, a set of plans for a house? A day or two, yes. Hmm. When I know just talking about extra staff, when we talked about starting this department, I remember asking lots of questions, and the idea was that the fees and stuff were going to pay for the department versus us in, you know, incurring additional personnel and expenses. So, you know, I'll, I'll be anxious to see how that goes yes. and, and how close we are to making that happen. Well, not. there's some potential, I mean, develop, housing development, you know, in, in the near future, I think it's going to be happening out off that creek. So, I mean, that, that so could really benefit us. Yeah, yeah, a lot. So let me um, ask you this. I'll talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know where you're going. Yeah. All right, I'm done. All right. Okay. I understand there'll be three council members or more going tomorrow to Richmond for the uh, VML. I think the mayor, uh, Councilman Lloyd, Councilman Thompson, and Vice Mayor Cockrell. But we're not riding together. Uh, uh, we we're will, not discussing Tom business. We will post a notice on the, on the website that you are going up there for VML. Okay. All right. It's uh, not a secret. I got a seven. Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> good. <personal day. laughs> Also, uh, I'll be um, while we make transition, uh, uh, I am registered to, to be uh, certified. Um, we're getting the certification with the 180 days uh, requirement. I've already registered for those courses, and then also I'm going to go ahead and look at registering to go ahead and be a building code official. Also, while we're working on some of our energy, uh, I'll be having some training on the 6th through the 9th uh, on that. I want to share that. And then um, and that's all I have to report on. And then I just want to, again, uh, on the 15th at 7 o'clock at Town Hall. At Town Hall. I'll be in the right hall. place. Let's have that on You can go in and help do it. Laurie, you're trying to send me out. I think they all thought I was going to pizza. Hey, you know.
I think the planning commission saw all three or more pizza. Yeah. <laughs> dropped it yeah. up, turned around and picked it up. And said, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Booyah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really go out. What happens? Do you need that yellow highlight? This year for interpretation and stuff. If you need. Yeah, y'all yeah, ready for the close? Yes. Yeah, wait for Amber. Amber went out the. She's coming. It's open book. Yeah, it's open book, but it's gone. Oh. I don't know. Okay, we're ready. Did you say you didn't pass it? The, the, the certified building official? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ready? And you yeah, know I'm what? ready. The training's free. I just want everyone to know the training's free. And the lodging is part of the fee that's taken out of the permit. So I've encouraged that for any free training you can get. You're right. Um, you take, it. take it. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Good Let's, luck. All right, here we go. Chris would like to <laughs> get this closed session well, going. All right, let's notes. move. Are we ready? Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to take it. I was going to Yeah. Okay. The town <laughs> council convene well. and go into closed meeting for the following purposes. One, to consider a potential amended proposed voluntary economic growth sharing agreement with the Board of Supervisors of Warren County or potential future annexation issues regarding the area in the vicinity of Route 522 north of the town of Front Royal pursuant to the following a, the discussion or consideration of the investment of public funds where competition or bargaining is involved, where, if made publicly, the financial interests of the town would be adversely affected under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711, A.6 and B, consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by town council regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel under Virginia Code Section 2.2-37 A. 3711A.8 and with respect to a prospective business or industry or the expansion of an existing business or industry where no previous announcement has been made of the business or industry's interest in locating or expanding its facilities in the community. To consider the town's legal position and strategy with respect to potential legal issues concerning town water and sewer service development fees, connection, or tap fees and related expenses pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2. 3711.A.8 of the Code of Virginia, as well as discussion concerning pursuant to Section 2.2-37A11A.5 of the Code of Virginia, like the girl in Hooked on Phonics. Two, for the discussion, consideration, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of any public body specific to the performance of the town manager, including executive director of the Front Row Economic Development Authority and the position of the town attorney, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-37A.1 of the Code of Virginia. Woo, second. Huh? I know, I know. I, 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 I can take a breath. Did it. All right, I seconded it. it Vice Mayor Cockrell. Yes. Councilman Gillespie. Yes. Councilman Lloyd. Yes. Councilman Fenn. Yes. Councilman Morris. Yes. Councilman Thompson. Yes. Don't say no. <laughs> no, I said yes. <laughs>